Okay, guys, we are live! So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Music YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly... Uh, what am I going to be? I'm going to be your friendly scald today, because today we are going to be playing part five of our year-long uh, Year of Ill Omens charity campaign. This time, this uh, session, I should say, is in support of the SOS Children's mm -hmm. Villages International Charity. You can find a link to the description for our campaign, Heroes Save Villages, down below. All donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International to help the over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children who uh, benefit from their services. This session, like all the other parts of this year-long campaign, have been shaped by the donors. The donors have selected what era we're playing in, where we're playing in, what kind of heroes, and what game we're playing. And as you can likely see from the screen, the selection by the heroes this or by the generous donors this time is GURPS Vikings. GURPS, of course, is the classic generic universal role-playing system designed by Steve Jackson and published by Steve Jackson Games. And Vikings is actually probably one of their most popular source books. It got to second edition in the third edition of the game, and it uh, remains in print. You can actually, uh, they have a neat thing through Amazon now where you can buy, like, custom print GURPS books, which is neat, uh, including ones I wouldn't have thought they could do anymore, like GURPS Conan. Uh, but with me today are a full crew of Vikings. And before I get to the introductions, I want to once again say a huge thank you to our stalwart players for jumping in on yet another voyage for the uh, Year of Ill Omens campaign. So guys, thank you so much for taking time to play this. I am very sorry for what's about to happen to your characters. <laughs> But let's go the order. I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing? And maybe let's hear if, what uh, your experience with GURPS has been thus far. First up, we've got Graham. Hi, I'm Graham. I am playing Guillemont the Tall, Huskal, and would-be Thane. Um, so he is, as, as all of us, a Viking through and through. He's very ambitious. He wants to succeed as a Viking. He wants land. He wants... He wants riches. He wants what he thinks is 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 his birthright and right. Um, in terms of GURPS, um, I was a big fan of GURPS um, back in the 90s with third edition. I ran a lot of GURPS fantasy. Um, and through no reason other than just time and other things that came along, I haven't played really very much GURPS for probably about 20 years. Um, so it's Quite nice to come back to it. Nice. Next up is Darren. Uh, yeah, hello, I'm Darren. I'm playing Hacken the Wild, who's a berserker and master of the great sword. Um, this is another new system to me. So, uh, as usual, I'm, I'm a virgin to another system that we, we're playing. So, looking forward to trying it out. Very nice. Uh, next up is David. Hi everyone, I'm David and I'll be playing Uzur Weird Way, a spirit walker and spell singer who knows that there are riches beyond land and gold to be had. Uh, I think I last played Gerbs about 15 years ago at university, um, a sort of steampunky Victorian murder mystery, which was good fun, but uh, I'm excited to return to it. Nice! Uh, next up is Jeffrey. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff, and uh, first I'm going to answer the GURPS question, which is pretty much the same answer I always have when we answer this, is I've probably played it on the channel here sometime, I don't <laughs> remember exactly which games, but... Uh, and as far as my character, I am Valgard the Glad, and uh, he would just like to say, Are you thirsty, my brothers? <laughs> nice! Here, toast to Mo. I was thinking about Mo today because I thought when you were talking about the time change, Mo is usually the one who reminds us of the UK time change. <laughs> so, <laughs> to Mo. Mm. And last but certainly not least is our resident armor smith, Dave. Hey, everybody. I am playing Sigrun, and um, she is cousin to German, and she's been away for some time. Uh, off in the land of the Franks, learning old French and other languages and uh, in court more than she probably was in the past but it's good to be home and we'll see how see how that goes nice uh, uh, as far as GURPS um, can I be like you know Darren <laughs> say I'm a, I'm a system virgin 
system version 2.0 um mm. that's about it yeah nice so the uh, for those who are new to GURPS, uh, the task resolution system in GURPS is actually pretty easy. GURPS has a well-earned reputation for being really co or potentially really complicated when you're making characters. Uh, I, I it is unlikely we would be playing GURPS if I did not have a computer program to make characters and had the ability to load characters into Roll Twenty from that directly in by you know the whatever is JSON or JSON or whatever the the mechanic is. Um, but once you have things done, the game, uh, the way there, there's one way that the game sometimes gets uh, an overly complicated reputation. That's in combat because it's a second by second, resol um, you know, resolution. But if you think of it in terms less in like I need to de deliberate for my turn the way I do in other games and embrace the like it's a second I can't do a lot. Pick something, do it then the game can really move along. The core mechanic for resolution in the game is 3D6. 3D6, roll under whatever you're looking for, whether that's your stat or your skill or your disadvantage, because you have some lovely disadvantages. <laughs> Otherwise, I mentioned before we went live that a lot of things in GURPS, I feel that they resolve in the mechanics the way you would expect them to instinctively. The way that, say, and I don't mean this as a criticism, just as a contrast, that like Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons resolves someone getting stabbed with a dagger. It's abstracted to the point where you're kind of, um, there isn't a clear connection between the fiction and what's happening necessarily in your character. GURPS, if you get stabbed in the abdomen with a knife, um, the game will reflect what that might be like in real life. So it is still a role-playing game, so there's going to be some abstractions like you, we don't get to make clear, you know, taking 30 seconds to decide what each of our seconds are going to be. But there is a degree of that in here. Um, falling, all the sort of mechanics that uh, you would expect um, in getting, you know, burning your hand. GURPS prides itself on trying to model that a as accurately as uh, as would happen in real life. We have some narrative meta currency that we're playing with, and we're playing with luck to get around some of that stuff. But just to give you a sense, and to give you a context as well, it's a point generation system. Your characters are built with 150 points, which is sort of their like entry level cinematic level. You're not to the point of like you know, dungeon delving characters, which would be in the 250 or 300 range. You're not a, like a character from a, you know, non-fantasy um, television show, which might be built with like 75. You're in that sweet spot where you're like, you got some neat shit that like clearly no normal person can do, but you're not into the obviously, you know, superhuman or demigod kind of uh, category. So that is the, just the basics of the system. Um, we're going to be looking for, in some cases, at margin of success or margin of failure. That's how high above you roll, how below you roll. And uh, Dave, did we lose you or we can still hear us? No, oh, I'm good. Can okay. You hear me? We can. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure we, I didn't, uh, we didn't lose you. Or more to the point, you didn't lose us. So our saga takes place in the year that the priests of the Christ God would call 793. The, it is still a number of years, still a couple of years before the King of the Franks will be crowned emperor by the Pope, but the Christian world is about to be in for a pretty catastrophic surprise by way of the Norsemen. Our session opens with our heroes walking away. Now, I shared some of this backstory last night uh, on the Discord, but you all are servants of, or vassals, I should say, of Jarl Hacken Flatnose. Hacken Flatnose has been in a blood feud with a rival Jarl named Skapti Greycloak for several years. And there was a really odd development that came of late. At the time of our adventure, the Viking raids that would be a recurring thing for um, 
England in particular, or the what will be uh, Great Britain, and uh, mainland Europe are not quite, they're not a thing yet. But this man known to both communities who has uh, been hosted at the great halls of both Jarl Hakon and Jarl uh, Skapti, a man named Odd the Lucky, sometimes called Odd the Fool or Odd the Drunk. Odd is a fisherman who was drawn away by, he said a swall, but if people, if you listen to the whispers behind his back, he probably got drunk and fell asleep. But what he found is that his ship his fishing vessel was taken away far to the southwest, and he found himself in a land of riches, a place where strangers who barely were able to make themselves intelligible to him, who seemed to pray to the Frankish god, were there. And with more money and more gold than even the finest of Jarls. Somehow Odd made his way back and has been hosted at both uh, Jarl Hakon and Jarl Skapti's great halls. They have plied him with liquor, which has led Odd to become even more of a boastful sort, expanding on the riches that he says there with every telling of his tale. And this made some people begin to plan. If a drunk in a fishing vessel, fishing vessel, could make their way to this land of riches? Surely, an equipped crew of Norsemen with a drakkar could make their way there. That idea occurred to both of the rival Jarls, and so the race was on to build an adequate ship for such a long voyage, uh, to select a crew, and then to beat them to these riches. Now, there is one development that Ozer, or rather that your um, crew had over the other, and that was Ozer. Ozer has always been able to read the omens. And there are two things that he had the spirits whisper to him. One was a bit of bad news. And that was that Skapti, his crew would sail first. The second is that Ozer knew where to find this place of fabled riches, an island off the east coast of England, the Holy Isle, a place that the inhabitants call Lindisfarne. And this is what we see, our Vikings leaving Lindisfarne. But there are two things that later historians will miss. One is that of the crew of 60 that Gearman the Tall selected by Jarl Hakon to lead this voyage, tragically, half of your crew, 30 brave Norsemen, made their way to Valhalla when they became trapped in a burning building and it collapsed on them. The other thing, there was no riches here. At least nothing that would come close to what Odd says. But Ozer, Ozer had some good news. I'll let Ozer tell, but let me show you the prisoner that Ozer took. Most other of these weak and feeble priests to the Christ God had no defenses. In some cases, they fell to the ground mewling like children rather than face you bravely to claim their place in Valhalla. But this one, Ozer, can you share with your captain why you spared this man? Ozer will walk over to Germans 
uh, and possibly would have stayed someone's blade as it was sort of coming down on on on, on the prisoner side. Not this one. Your spear gets in the way. Uh, uh, he is important. He knows things I need to know. We will take him home. Home. What yeah. sort of things, Oza? Things of is it, fire. Is it the ways of the spirits or the ways of this mewling Christ God? The spirits have shown me. He will lead us to where we need to go. All right. Just one more life. Take him with us. So, and we'll um, we'll fill the boat with what meager meager treasures we've gained from this. Your island. vessel uh, was built more for speed than it was for cargo, uh, which means it had a meager sixty men, uh, well, men and women. Forgive me, Sikrin, operating the uh, the oars. Normally, two per oar. Now they will be more sorely taxed. Are there any other living monks that you will bring with you or have you cut the rest of them down or they've fled or hid? I don't think there's much left here. Sadly. Um, yeah, I think oh, there's showed no, no interest in the others. He's very focused on this particular uh, grief of the Christ God. Gearmund, Hakon, Valgard, and Sigrun, would you each kindly give us, you'll find on, I believe the first um, tab has your different senses. This will be a sight check. None of you guys have, it's a perception check, this happens to be a sight, but it's neither the sheet actually records it by different sense. You said it's on the first tab? I think it's on the first tab. Uh, yeah, vision? vision? Vision, yes, please. No! I'm busy looking to see if they have any ale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have wine. They oh, have disgusting I'm... wine. Yeah, disgusting. I peer through the uh, the sort of burning smoke of the uh, of of the abbey uh, and the surrounding uh, huts, and I probably do see something through the uh, through the smoke. You do indeed. And uh, Sigrun, you are see this likewise from another place. Sigrun, I'd like you to follow up with an occult role, please. So mm. I think you actually have that. And Gearmund, uh, here's another neat thing about GURPS is that you can default almost every skill. Uh, because you rolled quite well enough. Hacken, you rolled pretty well, but I don't think there's a hope in hell of you actually knowing this. Uh... So Occult will be under your Skills tab, uh, Sigrun, and for you, oh wow. Um, Occultos is IQ, uh, Gearmund, IQ minus five, please. IQ minus five. You actually are fairly clever, too. Ah, oh, cousin. That's tough. Okay. And a reminder, I'm not saying you needed to rule this. The way our luck is working today, if you want to spend your luck, you roll two more times, take the better of all three results, and then write down when an hour will pass and you'll get your luck back. Sooner you spend it, sooner it starts coming back. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, I need it in five minutes. <laughs> Hacken, you see this as well. Something that is unusual. When Ozer is talking to this priest, he takes his wooden helm off. And you, Ozer, is that an unusual thing for you? Do you think? Oh, very much so, yes. He's almost never... Uh, maybe it's the first time his crew has seen him take the helm off. Mm. Mm. But Hacken, maybe... Uh, one thing I, I would say with the Berserker, I actually didn't... Because the Berserk disadvantage is actually not a lot of fun to actually play at the table. 
you're a berserker in the sense that you can choose to be as much of a careless, you know, whatever, but you're not like out of control of your character, because that especially when you do more damage than anybody else is probably not a lot of fun for you or your teammates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so you spirit and kind of, you know, go off in some other direction. Um, Gearmund and Sigrun, what you see is that Ozer seems to turn the mask. And he's not placing it on this Christian monk, but he's showing him something. And you can see the bald head of that monk, you know, uh, dirtied with soot and sp uh, spatters of blood from his uh, brethren being cut down. He nods at Ozer. And Sigrid, what you know, because of your occult role, Ozer's magic is in part runic in nature. He is touched by the gods, no doubt. But he also has a mastery of the runes, which is not something that you are gifted with. It is something you do need to study. And you happen to know that inside his helm, he has runes carved in there. And your role was in degree of success of three. You know for a fact, these are not the Futhark that are in there. Ozer's runes are of some other kind, whether from some other source, whether secrets from the gods, or whether something he invented himself. You know for a fact that they are not runes taught by other rune thanes or uh, rune shamans. The they're fact not of North, North origin, or they're... They may be what you can tell the the runes that are sort of recognized by the scan by the um, uh, those who work those kinds of magic are the Futhark. This you know is not that you've studied with all sorts of uh, occultic scholars while you were in the court of the Frankish king, and you know for a fact that there is no Norse uh, weird worker who uses any such things. And you've just seen this monk nod as if recognizing what was in there. Hmm. Now that is only known to you. Is there anything that you guys would like to tell us about what your Viking did or encountered or whatnot while raiding Lindisfarne? Or are we just seeing the aftermath of what they've done? I think uh, I think uh, Sigrun was really trying hard to prove herself again with her brethren. So she was in the thick of the fighting and the thick of the looting um, and ignored some of the things that would have otherwise been less chivalrous um, mm. had to like grit her teeth a few times and keep her mouth shut because she saw people doing things that uh, a good warrior wouldn't do in other parts of the world yeah one thing that you have that none of your, your crewmates have you have insight into Christianity Yeah. so you know that it, they weren't crying and afraid they were crying out to their uh, heavenly lord to preserve their immortal souls. So mm -hmm. everyone else is mocking them. You well, know? And she, she's learned things about honor and chivalry, and uh, while that might be seen as a disadvantage to some, uh, it's merely just another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. no, um, no heavily bound Saxon oak door survived my axe during the attack and so they cowered behind uh barred uh, uh doors heavy thick doors and generally speaking i found a way through mm. <laughs> and sigrun 
you rolled well enough for your perception that you know where this um, he will be introduced to you as Brother Viator. And you know where he had been working. What these okay. like everyone else is mocking them for being just they're 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 painting on on paper. Uh, but you would know that they are illuminating manuscripts. In their mind, they are revealing the word of God and giving it the due beauty that they feel it is necess- it is appropriate to grant. They're essentially doing scald work, but in yeah. a different way. So if you wish to see what one bit of insight, while the others may not, Ozer may think this, but the others would not think you would, you know, there's value to be found in books. You have found that to be very different, and you speak a wide variety and read a wide variety of different languages. Could I um, see where this monk was working and what he was working on? You absolutely can. And if you look at his, you have seen such illuminated tomes before, treasures that um, you had never seen in the Northlands yourself, but which you were exposed to in abundance in the court of the Frankish king. Where this differs, there is less illumination in the sense of adding beauty and color and signs of life and vibrancy. There is disturbing scratchings around the edge of this. And there is writing, and it is in the word, it's the script of the Romans. Hmm. And curiously, what has been repeated for what appears to be 40 or 50 pages is maybe a, a poem or a prayer or a hymn of some kind. Because what it reads is, I am the bridge anointed by the crown and the vril and the dragon. And there's a word you don't understand because it's Greek, flows through me. I am what was, what is, and what is to be. I am all. And it is repeated over and over and over for pages with the same scratchings on the side. And at first you would think it's just like as if they are trying to divvy things up, but why don't you give us a, just a flat intelligence check. IQ? IQ, forgive me, yeah. Right. Just want to make sure I'm hitting the right button. Yeah. Yeah, you only have four stats in GURPS. IQ is your intelligence, your uh, ST is your strength, DX is your dex, and uh, HT is your health. And no okay. modifiers. Oh, right, it's rolling, uh, yeah. Ooh. Uh, you want to trigger your luck? Do it. <laughs> like triggering luck. So Here roll two, two more times and mark your time oh, down. Right. If he's both going as quick as my... <laughs> well, while we're waiting for the roll, I'll just quickly add what you saw Valgard doing during the raid. Yeah, go ahead. I think, go ahead. I think he went from Valgard the glad to Valgard the extremely disappointed as he was going through room to room trying to find the ale and riches and just every room yeah. was just, you know, more plain stuff, probably, yeah. you know, prayer books and plain clothes and nothing exciting. So. Well, and with your incredible charm, you know, I think you've got, they may feel safe with you. Right. So they showed you everything they had to offer. <laughs> right. Sigrin, you succeeded. And by turning the page around, you realize, imagine if you will, instead of having, or yeah, let me ask you, you know what cross hatching is in drawing? You draw and then yeah. you cut to the side. Imagine if you carved the similar, the same or similar runic markings a hundred times in the corner of a page. 
That's what he seems to have done thousands of specific invocations of the same rune all around 40 or so pages of this thing, repeating the same phrase, and with still another like 20 or 30 pages left to be filled. Seems rather obsessive and excessive and impressive. Um, I'll skip there. And uh, I think can she? How how big is this tome that he's been writing in? Easily Maybe carryable. I, yeah, I think put that in my stack. It called my. And I'll watch uh, Ozer while I. As you're stuffing it in, one of your fellow uh, Vikings says, "Is it gold?" Might have some value to the right people, <sighs> but most of these probably won't. He kind of dismisses, and then he kicks the lectern that it was on, and then goes back to trying to loot once again. Yeah. Ozer, Gearman, or Hacken, anything you wish to tell us before you all meet up once again? I think Ozer would have fought with his fellow Vikings, but then when the, the ones were trapped in the Great Hall uh, in the fire, he would have stood there, not rushing in to try and help, but with sort of a weird far off glaze in his eyes as if he was seeing something different as the flames were consuming the building and he was sort of irresponsive for a few moments as he just sort of stared off in the middle of the distance. Oh yeah. Because if their their spirits are still lurking, you will still be able to speak to them. What difference of uh, is it what side of uh, life they're on? Hacken? Um, yeah, I think Hacken similar to Valgard is just disappointed. Not much of a fight, no riches. <laughs> this is a wild goose chase, and he's just generally pissed off with everybody, including yeah. his fellow Vikings, <laughs> for leading him somewhere that's you know a waste of his time, basically. That's how he sees it. So let's say that the remaining 30 surviving um, Vikings are grabbing what last things they need, and all five of you are able to come back together with Ozer's prisoner. So, have, you, have you tied his hands, Ozer? No, I think Ozer would not have tied his hands. Okay. So, so there is no sign. There is no sign of uh, Scapti's crew anywhere around here. Uh, Hacken, so, why don't you give us a tracking check? Tracking. There's no obvious uh, sign of them. It does not appear that this place was touched before, and, but... And they were ahead. Hacken gives a thorough check of it, and, like, they haven't snuck in, they haven't landed. There's no sign of Scapti's crew whatsoever. This is not the right place. Um, so, Oza, is this monk going to take us to the right place I do not I do not believe we should be returning uh, with half our crew dead and with such meagre spoils um, we need to find the place that we, were, we set out for yes he, he will take us where we need to go Will the omens merely foretold that Scapti's crew would leave first. They didn't say that they would get there first. Hmm. Hmm. Very well. Well, we shall take him and we shall see what we shall see. Let us give chase. The serpent turns again. I think uh, we're all going to start to load the ship load the, the drakkar right now and while there's more commotion and whatnot i think sigrun's going to try and pull gearman aside so that she can talk to him without ozer okay now before you do so gearman did you get a measure of how sigrun performed in the raid it's at dave said this is the first time that she's really been back with uh with your kin once again how long has she been? How long have you been away, Sigrun? Years. Decade. Yeah. 
And how much how much did I see of you before you left? Uh, our families were reasonably close. I knew the measure of her character, perhaps not measured her sword. Right. So I've got little to go on in terms of comparing how she how she fared. Why don't you give uh, us Sigrun? Give, give us a uh, sword, a broadsword. I think is your skill. Okay, from the combat. Uh, this one you can find under the uh, skill one because uh, you're not making an actual attack. I'm not. You're interested in what the damage is. I'm just interested in uh, an idea right. of how you performed skill wise. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. I keep making him make rolls when. No, that's, not, that's fine. <laughs> it's like uh, I've already used my luck. Yeah, I was gonna say, too bad you Ooh. used your luck. So no luck required, Balbert. She, she definitely <laughs> was was you know how well. So that's just like just barely. Uh, a success. How do you think you would interpret that as to her performance, Sigrun? That's for you, Dave. How, how do you think you would... Oh, um... I think she she did well, but, you know, she wasn't... There, there were, we weren't fighting any sort of, like, significant force or anything. So didn't need to do anything over the top. That's how she'll still explain it. Did she like, hesitate? Oh, well, no. Okay. So, Gearman, that is what you saw. All right. In which case, fine. Um, all I would say is um, you need to keep your shield higher. And the way you move, you need to move quicker. Um, the Franks have made you a little bit soft, perhaps. Maybe it's uh, all this talk of you, well, just eating and drinking in large lit halls. Um, but that's fine. You just need more of this. Well, in fact, not more of this, but more of what's to come. Yes, this wasn't exactly the... Uh, no. The bounty we were promised. No. No. Have, have you noticed anything strange, though, today while we were... in their village? Yes, they don't drink ale. <laughs> Violet's up on the ship. <laughs> Loading the junk. <laughs> what is this wine? <laughs> I mean, from here, do we see other lands? From Linda's farm, do we see no. the? Do we, we don't see the mainland. No. Okay. Well, at um, least you don't see any lights, which would be the thing you would be looking for. Yeah. Cousin, did you notice Ozer take it out? Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Um, he has some affinity with this particular monk um, goodness knows really what is going on there I think we need to speak to him mm. the runes in his helmet they're not what you would expect no not very not very viking really they're not at all they're not at the and he, methods would use I know that. I believe his heart is I believe his heart is true but he could be deceived. I'm not worried about his heart. I just worry about what he's t what he's doing and where he's taking us. Well, I worry, but it is, it is all that we have to go on. Um, I shall trust. We, we should have to trust in the spirits that Ozo can guide us. Um, Your decision. Just making sure you know. I know. It weighs. It weighs on me. And I will rally. I'll rally the, uh, the people that. And is there enough for us to provide any sort of burial to, or however we would manage the our, our dead kin? Uh, unless you're waiting for the fire to burn out and then digging them out from within that structure, then then that is their grave. Then we, then I will rally the. I will rally. Seek to rally. Um, the Vikings that remain, okay. um, and 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 um, speak to them of you know um, we we have been tested here in one way by losing our kin. Um, Why don't you we... give us a leadership uh, check? Yeah. It's a skill with uh, plus two because of your status. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. I mentioned as well that you have plus two to your 
Um, fear checks because of your combat reflexes. You actually have plus four because you also have fearless too. Right. Gearman, he doesn't shrink. So the modifier that I put in, is that to the skill or is it to the dice roll? Uh, the modifier should be a positive number. It should add to your skill. Great. Okay. Yeah, and Let's not a plus that. sign. Remember, that makes the world invert. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So success. Yeah. What um, your crew, uh, I interrupted you doing your, your shtick. What does Gearbin tell the crew? Because it is very well received. Uh, we have... We have been tested, but um, the gods are still with us, and we will not return home until we have the glory and the riches that we have sought for and fought for. And we and we will do it not only for us, but we will do it for our kin that we leave in this forsaken isle. Ah! Oh, sir, what are you doing while everyone is loading stuff back up into the, the car and getting ready to pull out? <laughs> I think that there will be a scene where he maybe notices Sigrun and Girmun talking off to the side and just sort of like stares over and he has his mask back on to just sort of stares over creepily. Uh, but we'll mostly be very much focused on talking to Brother Viator and, and getting information out of him. And unlike everyone else, but the mask hides it, but this went well. He, you know, this is what we came here for, all these talk of ale and gold and, and riches. <laughs> they just don't understand, so he's quite pleased. <laughs> would, uh, Ozer, would you give us a perception check, please? Nice. Perfect. You can perceive this, Ozer. Something leans into you. <laughs> As you are looking over at them, and you can hear an airy voice. They do not trust you. Ozer is quite used to these things happening, so he'll still, he'll still flinch somewhat. It's still always a bit disconcerting. Uh, and he'll, he'll, he'll lean to Vin and say, like, they would not understand. It is understandable that they would not trust me, but what needs doing will be done. Okay. Hakan, would you give us a... Perception check, please. It's gonna be a pretty hard one, but yeah, get it over here. I uh, think an off chance you were the only one who didn't seem to be doing anything to see, so I wondered if you might have walked by him and like, what did you say? But <laughs> I think over the din on the beach and whatnot, it's just not uh, not quite enough. So then, um, before we climb back onto the ship. Uh, Brother Viator walks to you, Ozer, and says in Old Norse, so anyone who is listening in could hear this, you will take me home then. You will show me what I need to see. You seek secrets? I seek knowledge. The Monasterium Secretorum has much knowledge. No harm will come to you as long as we end at your home and your secrets will be mine. I have foreseen it. Then we have seen the same thing. He nods as if, like, in the way that only, you know, like, knowing acceptance can kind of pass between those who can see, you know, the divinations of the future. 
with that, you all climb back on, and with a half crew, Girmund, you set sail. But where is it you are going now? Where are we going, Ozil? What do the spirits say? Where are we to be guided? What Brother Viator has told you, Ozer? Sail north until the mists, and then wests until the fire. All right. We'll do what we can and follow that route. One of the crew members uh, said, Girbund, we follow this, these directions. He is a devil, I say. This is a trick of Loki. Well, maybe. Maybe it is. So we should be worthy of it. But we, we need to trust Oza to guide us. He speaks through him. Looks over at Ozer. Very well. And they go over and start setting out. And as we're sailing away, you hear the you hear Valgard playing his drum sort of in rhythm to get the Ben rowing and he starts singing a you know, a Viking song to sort of cheer everyone up. Love our... it. Why don't you give us a performance check? Let's see what uh, kind of morale boost you're gonna uh, offer these guys. Because things um, may get scary at some point. I have a point. whole lot of different ones. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the not enthralling... I have yeah. performance, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that's a degree of success of two. Are you happy uh, with that? Nope. I'm going to use my luck. I <laughs> 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 so, I'm going to get a really good roll. Yeah. Hey! Oh! There we go. I'll this, roll the last one just in case. It's a margin of success of 11. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You rolled twice. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. 11, which is fucking bonkers. Like, these people would follow you quite literally into fire. It is forgotten utterly how half of the crew has been lost. So, you set sail. The sea is unforgiving for the first couple of days of travel. But is there anything you guys wish to do while sailing northward in search of the mists? I'm going to try to read that script again and try to memorize it. Yep. Uh, I am the bridge. Da -da -da. Give us um, a perception check, please, Sikrin. Yeah. Is that on the general? Uh, first tap, yeah. Should it be the uh, vision if, if you want to be specific? Let's see here. Same score. Now let me put him on how we do here. Ooh. Ooh. So what you fail to recognize, Sikrin. Somebody's watching. Someone is watching you. Yeah. You're so engrossed in the text. He's not aware that someone is paying attention to the sheets. <laughs> They've got a book out at sea. Someone is glaring at uh, at you as you are watching or reading that. Anyone else have anything they wish to do? Yes, I will. Uh, Gimond will ensure that he speaks to every single one of the remaining crew, and he will um, speak of their deeds. He will encourage them, uh, and he will um, he will say that the that the gods are with us and that we will yet prevail and uh, your names will be written strongly or will be spoken strongly in the halls. And yeah. so I'm basically just just ensuring that the crew's hearts are still are still with, sort of with us as we go. Definitely. Yeah, and but like between your speech originally, Valgard's incredibly rousing uh, song uh, and your continued reassurance, they are confident 
bring it on. If the Skywalker has plans for us, let's trick the trickster. Yeah. What about Ozer uh, or Hakon? Um, yeah, Hakon, can he use his weather sense to try and, like, uh, make the best of the... The weather, yeah. you know, when to pull up the sails, when to push when we've got good weather. Absolutely. Why don't you give us a weather sense roll at uh, plus two. Remember, don't put the plus sign in. Incredible. Yep. You are maximizing the the winds. Hacken may look like a wild man with a sword, but he is incredibly well-versed in the ways of the wild and the sea. Ozer. Uzer would like to consult the signs and mm. use his oracle uh, powers yeah. or knowledge. So let me check in. What do you think it's like? What what is he what are his ways? Is it reading bones, reading ruins? Is it piscatology where you're cutting open a fish drawn from the sea? No, I think it it'll be it'll be a runes inscribed on bones. Okay. And you'll have a bag of them. Um, and he will add a drop of blood to to do the the pile before okay. consulting them. So then the first check is to give us a sense roll, so it'll be a perception roll. It says the GM rolls, but because we're playing with some narrative meta currency, let's mm -hmm. put it in your hands. All right, so you have an answer. Let's see if you can interpret it. Uh, IQ roll? Uh, oh, sorry, yes, an IQ roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't see what I'm reading clearly out of camera? <laughs> David, come on. <laughs> wow. Six degrees, or six margin of success. That's not a critical, but it is still pretty fucking good. What you are interpreting from this is that fate awaits, but enemies pursue. In which case, after gathering up the runes and sort of mostly muttering to himself and sort of like wind sweeping his cloak, uh, he will make his way over to where Girmand is. Genuinely the creepiest guy in the crew. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yep. is he talking to someone? Is he talking to me? <laughs> yeah, probably just the mask stares at someone as I just mutter under my breath. Yeah, yeah he, he will then head over to Girman and say, Captain. Girman is talking to one of the uh, crewmen. I'll say, uh, so you've been speaking to Njord, presumably, the sort of god of the sea, and uh, uh, is all well. We are on the right course, but there are enemies on our tail. Our tail? I fear that Skepti's crew is after us. Does someone want to clamber up the mast and try and get a view? Um, okay. Is there somebody who's good at that? I wonder if there's any of you who are good at that. <laughs> I should. Hacken's pretty good at that, I should imagine. He's got good perception. Go on then, Hacken. Yeah, so and, Hacken, uh, give us a strength yeah. check. Okay. Yeah. Springs up and, like, <laughs> as if he was climbing a ladder, clambers up to the top, the ship's bobbing back and forth, his hair is going wild at the top. And you're looking around. Give us a perception check, please, Hacken. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you a plus two to this as well. Oh, Just... I didn't put on, but... Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, Hacken, you can see just coming over the curve of the earth, there is another Viking sail. Someone is in pursuit of you. I'll, I'll probably just point out, and I'll just assume Scappy. And you also look us. back 
Uh, while you cannot see it, you trust, I, I think, Hacken's... Well, you tell me, would you trust Hacken's eyes? Always. So then, the mists await. Uh, Ozer, while you are sort of looking back as well, uh, Brother Viator walks up beside you. And I guess that's one thing. Captain, have you done anything to secure this guy, or are you not concerned of having him have the run of the ship? Um, I don't think I, I have. He's supposed to be helping Ozer to guide us. So I'm, I'm going to have to just... I'll probably keep an eye on him, but I won't so, secure him. As you're looking back, Ozer, he comes walking up and says, I did not dream of them. Who did you dream of? He just sort of holds his eyes on you. So, normally, the way that you can add some extra speed, it's all hands on the ships on open ocean. But you're at half crew right now. Mm. Unless Scapti has suffered a similar loss, they will have double the hands. Yeah. So, what do you guys do? Can we use the mists? Hacken um, says they should not be far from, from the way the weather has felt. They should not be long, but you will need to reach there before your enemies. So the way we do this, instead of a group test, is by contributing your margins of success. You will want to beat them uh, by... I think the margin of success we'll say is a 20. That's four for each of you. And that'll give me four rolls with the other crew. I'd like you to each consider how you will be contributing to this, whether it's putting your back into helping with the rowing or motivating the crew or using unconventional tactics. Each of you can assume that you have a sailing skill equal to your IQ. I didn't bother to add it on for everyone because you're all Vikings and like them. So, anyone have any ideas as to how they wish to try and help and outrun Scapties? Uh, I think oh. Hacken, sorry, will start by just shoving one of the Vikings off of one of yours to the other side. I'm gonna. Oh, I've got this, and I'll just like pull the same strength as the ones opposite, and keep yeah. the boat <laughs> just moving as fast as it's possible. It's another thing that's worth pointing out that uh, attributes in, even though like I think Hacken's got a strength of 14. Uh, hmm. Yeah, the difference between a strength of 14 and a strength of 10 is like Schwarzenegger in the 80s, and like you know me at 19. <laughs> so <laughs> you are. Go ahead and give us a. Um, Strength check, please. Yeah. Holy shit. Seven. Uh, maybe it's uh, the sheer strength that you've got in there, or maybe it's just the the either camaraderie or the competition amongst the other Vikings. They're like, ah, and they start stripping their shirts off and, yeah, yeah, and are all trying to get fully into dragging this along. You've contributed seven to the necessary 20 already. Nice. I actually think that um, Valgard sees this and immediately he starts telling the other men, like, see the power of, you know, Hakon. And he's sort of like giving them a rousing speech of like kind of trying to like get everyone to draw on his physical prowess to like roll like him and like, you yeah. know, motivate them to like basically follow his lead. Yeah. So try yeah, to yeah. like give a motivational speech, but based on that performance. Is that a public speaking? Yeah, well, I think so. Hell yeah. Okay. And roll. Yeah. 
Yes. Five. Wow. So yeah, Valgard is like r almost running or capering down the deck, motivating everyone with this. You know, a little hit in his drum when he needs to add some accent to it. Yeah. Ooh, you guys are 12 towards the necessary 20. What's next? Uh, Ozer will maybe unexpectedly not draw on his knowledge of the spirits, but sort of remind everyone that he is a Viking like them, even though he is weird and they don't necessarily trust him. <laughs> because he actually knows quite a bit about survival on the open ocean, so he mm. will be at their uh, proud the tip just of keeping an eye for like the, the way the waves form and he'll sort of shout, you know. I, as a player, I'm very bad with boats and ships and which bits are called what. But yeah, I'm yeah. sure Ozer will sort of, you know, heave more to the, you know, stern or aft and just sort of see how, do, how the, the waves come in. Well, what if he, this, what know? if he came running up onto the, the, what do you call it, the masthead? And was like leading yeah. out over the the ocean, directing where, really studying and seeing the swells and waves. Go ahead, give yeah. us a survival check. Look at that another two. That's fourteen total. Uh, you could spend your luck. Yeah, I think I've yeah I've spent I'll spend my luck. Right. Two more rolls, take the best of the three, and then nice. mark the time. Five. Or four, so five. That is 17 of the necessary 20 so far. Okay, so I can I can probably foul it up now. But um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I think uh, uh, Gearmund will basically pass Oza uh, heading towards the uh, aft of the ship, and he'll, he'll punch him um, in the shoulder and say, oh, we trust you, Oza. We just don't necessarily trust the voices that speak to you and then get to the aft of the ship and sort of guide, try to guide the ship um, and, and, and en en encourage them all uh, from there, but try to guide the ship. Sure, um, yeah, yeah. Just right an IQ direction. So I think it's a sailing, I think. Yeah. So go ahead and give it just a... Good at. Let's see. Oh, never mind. Let's see what happens. Come on. Yes! Holy oh. shit! <laughs> <laughs> what do you see as you kind of wow. turn this thing? Uh, we base uh, the, the the ship almost sort of rides the waves. It's it's just riding the waves. It's as if it's as if Njord himself has picked our ship up and is is is, is guiding us through through the water. Yeah, uh, as we head Crest towards the mists, <laughs> crashes yep. down again. Water sprays across the half naked crew. They <laughs> say, so, "Yeah, oh, Valgard, you know." Uh, uh, celebrating and exalting them as they go, and Ozer out front, uh, pointing the way along. And as you turn, almost as if it was rising to welcome you, the mist awaits. Uh, Hacken, you spare a look back, and you can see more and more of that sail is there, and you can hear the cry from the ship to the aft, where they have spotted you. But almost as soon as you see that, you guys are engulfed by the mist. What do you do next? I think, Gearman, you've already uh, successfully opposed it, so you uh, pull the, the rudder to hard turn. Whoever's working the sails does the same thing, and it arcs hard to the west, and then begins drifting off. Who would like to roll the listen to see if they are outpacing the crew? Is that Hakon? I think Sigrun. Sigrun hasn't done. Sigrun? Yeah. What do you think, Sigrun? Come on, you've been listening to all these whispers in mm. in candled halls all this time. Surely you <laughs> must have helped you. <laughs> I appreciate your concern for my... <laughs> So, yeah, I guess when we were trying to put, uh, when Hakon started his display, she had dropped in and to the oars as well, but not with the same kind of vigor. So, yeah. Okay. So, 
currently we have the ch the crew cheering and we have Valgard crying out um, ways to motivate them. You are surrounded by mist right now. What is your is your plan to continue trying to outpace them, or are you trying to lose them in the fog? Uh, how are we doing in terms of outpacing them? Uh, you've been completely in, uh, swallowed by the fog. And uh, Sigrin, you listen, they are closing. You cannot see right. them, but you can hear them. Uh, in which case, in which case we shall, um, sh oh, well, I suggest our stratagem should be that we um, we become one with the mist and we, uh, we shall allow them to pass us. Silent, change direction. Yeah. So here's the way that uh, uh, group checks uh, work in GURPS, which I think is kind of interesting. If you've got someone who is better uh, at a certain skill uh, than others, you can just ha have them make the skill for everybody, and they take a penalty of minus one for each additional person to a max of minus four. So Hacken, I think, has the best stealth among you. I uh, think. Twelve. Yeah. So you're going to get a plus two from the amb... Oh, hold on, actually, more than that. Uh, where is it here? Yeah, you're going to get a minus... Sorry, plus six to your roll. But to do the whole crew will be minus four, so it's a net plus two, Hacken. If you choose to take the lead, yeah. you tell us how you get the whole crew to try and be sneaky. Um, I think it would be mainly intimidation, to be honest. <laughs> like, if, if anyone starts making any sort of noise, I would just give them this wild <laughs> stare. Um, and obviously, you can't see very far, but enough, and they will be, feel it on the back of their neck if they're like in front and stuff just <laughs> so anyway, go ahead, any sort of noise yeah go ahead and give us a stealth at uh, plus two plus two Oof. you happy with that or you're no i think i'm gonna use my luck at this nice. stage i don't think that's great dave did your luck come back already i think so eh? soon yeah nope not, not yet okay uh, that's a six uh, degree of success do one more just in case. Mm -hmm. uh, six okay. definitely. Six burst. is pretty fucking amazing. Mm. So, what do we see as Hacken brings the entire crew into silence? Um, once they get the the message, it's like one of those practice drills where all the the sort of oars go up, and they're just held like silently, like dead ninety degrees out. And everyone is just silent, just looking for the signal of, you know, mm -hmm. when they can talk again. And I'm looking to uh, the captain and just, you know, we're just holding and listening out for the mist, hoping that they'll go past. So, Captain, you were um, steadying the crew beforehand. Would you give us a leadership check? I am going to make a fear check for the crew, or rather you are. But you have two ways, and you're going to get to your leadership a plus two from what Valgard rolled before. Holy smokes. <laughs> okay. So would you kindly give us a 3d6 roll? And this is going to be against a... Let me see here. Uh, it'll actually be against a 14. Yes. So if you walk the deck, you know, taking the measure of your men, mm. every one of them is holding firm. Mm. The oar is up. And in the film version of our campaign, I think what we would see is your ship go up and then suddenly whoosh, turn left with only the sound of kind of whoosh, a little whipping of the sails. And then as you pass into the mist, the pursuing vessel whoosh, would move directly forward losing you in the fog. As you guys mm. are sitting in silence, the cries of Skapti's crew grow quieter and quieter mm. until you cannot hear them any longer. 
There is only the sound of the waves. What do you guys wish to do next? And I take it as uh, they're heading the way that we want to go. Yeah, I think we'd, we'd already, up. yeah, we'd already, yeah. we turned west then. We're in there still going north, or? Oh, are they? Oh, yeah, even better. Really. Even better. Well, well, we've probably left it long enough, uh, but with, um, still quietly, we're going to resume uh, Orin okay. and make way uh, to the location that uh, Oza and whoever he's talking to uh, is telling us to go. So a day of traveling, a day and a night, and a day again traveling in the mists is... I think understandably disconcerting. The crew still seems to be holding well from your leadership role, but feeling as if you are moving in a bubble, encased in a cloud almost, is disconcerting. You cannot see where you are going. You cannot track how far you have gone. All you can tell is that your arms, your shoulders, your legs have grown more tired from oars. And there is no way of telling when this will end. Anything you guys wish to do during that time? I think... Uh... Sigrun reciting the poem periodically to herself, trying to figure out what it means. Okay. She's probably, probably at risk of being... She, she, she knows people are going to stare. She knows that people are going to whisper. Mm. Things. But this is, this is important. Are so, you making any effort to conceal it from Brother Vitor? No. Okay. I have his book. So then as you were saying that, I think at one point, he is uh, perhaps just staring off near the front of the ship. And he turns and sees you. And he says uh, in like medieval Latin, you speak the tongue of the Romans. Yeah, she's going to. Uh... I, she heard him speak any other language. Uh, Viator, he, he heard him speak to Ozer, but that was in Old Norse. In Old Norse, she's going to try Old German. What do you say? Uh, I speak many languages. His eyes get bigger, and he responds in Old French. Really. You've traveled far. <laughs> She'll reply in old French. Um, <laughs> enough to know that you have written some very interesting things in a text, which I'm sure you've seen me take. He I nods. need to understand what it means. I am the bridge, and then she repeats it all. Yeah. And he says, does it not call to you? Strangely enough, she's got like some weird quirks. <laughs> this probably is calling to her. Um, <laughs> her obsession with lure for lore. And yeah, uh, this doesn't strike a sorcery or any phantom voices. So it's not quite on its yeah. If we'll see here. Yeah, go ahead and roll your sorcery and you'll get your lock back. Obsession? Sorcery? Obsession, sorcery, yeah. Uh, would that be occultism? No, no, you actually just roll 12 or less. Because oh. well, what happens, so with, with disadvantages, if you succeed in the roll, you've resisted it and you're able to act as if you're not obsessed with it. But if you fail the roll, you need to roleplay your character. Oh! 
<laughs> okay, so she's got a. Get this straight. She's got a twelve or less in sorcery obsession, so that means she it triggered. It means it does not. What you what the roll is for disadvantages is to resist it. Oh, okay. So, for example, yours is a twelve or less, which means you got a decent chance of resisting it. Ozer yeah. has a truthfulness uh, of six or less. Which means he pretty much is it's impossible for him to lie, next to impossible for him to lie. So she she feels the pull and then she like is able to like steal herself, Mm -hmm. and and she's like I I know this is important and I know that somehow this is tied to what's going on, but I I can close the book if I but I need to understand what it means. Is this connected to Ozer somehow? So there is. Would you give us a um, an intelligence check at plus two, please, Sigrid? And remember, don't put the plus sign in. Intelligence check. Plus what? Hey. Plus dose. I know the other other language. Don't you see if I know them. <laughs> <laughs> Your connection has a sense of drama. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Ooh. Ooh, so, just. So perhaps you were just distracted. Maybe you're out of sorts by the unchivalrous way that the monks at uh, Lindisfarne were dispatched, or perhaps being back among old, like the difficulty of returning home again. Only your home happens to be full of murderous Norsemen and, you know, bizarre mystics. There's two things that dawn on you. I think you overheard him talk about his home. His home, he said, Monasterium Secretorum. That is Latin. In Latin, that would be Monastery of Secrets. And his name, Viator, is also Latin. Translated into a language you would understand, that would be Brother Traveler. Someone as widely educated and seemingly literate in a number of languages, what do you think such a person it was doing at such a seemingly remote outpost like Lindis Farm. And obsessively writing the same things over and over again, page after page. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like he was being hidden there or kept there for his safety. Should be like, what kind of secrets are you guarding, Brother Traveler? He crouches down, and there is a damp that has settled in on the deck. So what he can do is draw something, clear some of the moist away with his finger. And what he draws is the sigil that you saw repeated over and over and over and over again as illuminations on those tens of pages. Why doesn't Giermund, Hacken, Ozer, and Valgard each give us a perception check at uh, plus two? Remember, don't put the plus sign in. I know it's a separate uh, separate stat, actually, because some of you guys I've bought up the perception and some I've bought down. Oh, there it is. Uh, Yeah, vision, if... if, um... Whoa, Ozer, I forgot how high your perception is. Holy smokes. So Hacken, Giermund, Ozer, and Valgard, you have all seen the Brother Viator speaking to Sigrun. And I'm not sure you've seen them speak thus far on the trip. The only one that Viator seems to have uh, spoken to has been Ozer. You can feel free to 
say or do anything you wish. The ship is still surrounded by fog, thick enough to barely see the end of your oar. Hmm. It might be a little bit of impatience from Gearmund and just say, we are sat in the midst of the mist, waiting, trying to understand where we're going. It would be wise if there is anything that is known for it to be spoken. So you've walked over to them? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sigrun, you didn't realize your your cousin was there. The rest of you can assume you've seen Gehrman finally walk the deck and say this. His voice is very easy to hear up and down the deck. She looks up. And she reaches down into her, I guess, she's probably got like an ore chest, a chest where she's sitting on, and she, while her dry stuff is, so she pulls out her sack and the book and hands it to Gehrman. She's like, brother traveler says we're going to the monastery of secrets and yet written over and over again the same words on 40 plus pages in this text and she recites it out to the best she can in Old Norse a translate yep and I'm just inquiring as to why what is so significant about these words? When you struggle with the Greek word, Brother oh, yeah. Viator will interject, Hyperborea, the land of the north winds. Merely trying to understand what's happening here. Uh, Captain. She's almost a little wow. the informality. Perhaps Ozer can shed the light. And she speaks a little bit louder because she yeah, where knows is Ozer? Ozer Hackwad and Belgard are all watching. I, I think for a moment when Ozer realized that Zigrun and Brother Viata were talking, there's almost like a jealous look. Like, so mm. he sort of visibly tenses up a bit and it's like, sort of like, mm. but then will make his way over as, as he sort of hears Zigrun say that and will say, we are seeking knowledge that the old father would give his other eye for, in a hope to barely understand what it means. But maybe you, Zigrun, who has spent such time among other folks, you have a bit of an understanding. Maybe your learning will come in handy on our journey. Seems that like Ozer um, knows more about your Sigrun than you realized. Just under, I just read texts. Uh, don't have an understanding as you seem to appreciate for these strange things. Just want to know where we're going, and I, I, I don't know. Hacken, would you give us a three d six roll, please? Because I'm curious whether your greed is going to get the better of you right now. <laughs> no, we've got it under control. Because <laughs> what they when they hear about we're seeking knowledge, uh, I, oh, you hear that and just yeah, where's the money at? <laughs> Stop oh, the oh knowledge. <laughs> so you will get your luck back because but you didn't trigger your your greed. My luck's back in five minutes. No, no, you you made a roll against obsession sorcery. It's back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that is what Sigrun has had to say. That is what Ozer has had to say. Captain? Well, I don't, I, I, I've not heard the right words. I've not heard the words land and gold and riches. Or ale. Or ale. <laughs> I, have not, I have not heard these words. I've heard of strange tongues, mysteries, secrets that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't do it for me how far are we from this place we don't know I don't know what treasures are there to be 
that we can return to our people with to pay for the lives of the of the folk that we have lost i hear nothing i hear mutterings of secrets and people and lands of the north wind all i can say is is that there had better be something worth our while here and I've heard nothing so far, nothing that would make me feel that we are doing the right thing. Brother Viator says something uh, in a language that you don't understand. Um, but uh, Sigrun, you do. You will meet your doom, barbarian. Uh, 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 did she have a CX she can pull on this guy? That's not that's her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so Sigrun <laughs> recognizes what he has said and understands it fully, but none of the rest of you do as of yet. I think she pulls a dagger and and grabs uh, Brother Vitor by the scruff of the net and says, "What do you what do you mean?" Okay, so this suddenly took a turn, German <laughs> and Ozer. <laughs> Yeah. So this will be, why don't you give us a brawling check, Sigrun? I lean to the guy beside me. She's trying to find out where the ale is. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is great. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you have him uh, kind of uh, push up against the, the edge, your dagger by his neck. What, what did you, what language did you say that in? Old I Norse? said that in Old, Nor Old Norse. Okay. Yeah, and we shall speak out. And you, and you, you will speak our tongue and make yourself plainly understood. Go Speaks ahead. He speaks of your doom, cousin. Well, we shall all face our doom. Ah, uh, this sounds imminent. So, Kiermund, let's see here. Why don't you give us... What a bad feeling about this. It's an IQ. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing is over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a will minus five roll. Whoa. Oh, nice. That sounds good. You're just defaulting to a skill. You don't have the skill for intimidation, but... Oh, and get to... Uh, sorry, my, make it minus three, because you would have plus two. Oh, all right. So your, your cousin does have the... No. So <laughs> you, to his throat. you threaten him, but it's just not... Well, I guess, hold on. You haven't spent your luck yet. Do you want to use luck on oh, him? Oh, um, yeah, go on. Yeah. So roll two more times. All oh, right. Okay. So that's minus three. Yep. Yeah. Minus three. Yep. Yeah. Go. Come on. Mm. Come on. Here it comes. Green. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, yes. So. He, uh, I'm trying to remember the sequence here. Sigrun had said he speaks of your doom, and then what had you said? Well, I said to him, speak plainly. And I say we will all face our doom um, at some point. But, um, Lee, you said you will speak our tongue. Yeah, you will speak our tongue and speak plainly so that you will, so that you are understood. He looks over. Tonight you will see the flame. And it will bring you your fate. I'm a proud Viking, apparently. So I just say, good, bring it on. We all <laughs> seek our fate. The crew is kind of like, Ugh! Yeah, we'll face it. We'll face whatever it is. Let them go. <laughs> but it's, he... but in, inside, Gaiman's thinking, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 he looks over in 20 years 
So what I'd like everyone to do is give us a health check, please. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. No. Uh-oh. <laughs> straight. Uh, just straight. Yeah, no modifiers. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> it's all that wine you've been sampling. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this horrible wine. Ugh. Made me seasick. Oh, sir. <laughs> As the evening is coming. So it's here. Did we get everyone here? Oh, we're just waiting for Sigrun. I don't click it. Oh, oh, it's, I'm sure it's coming. Yeah, so. so um, as uh, Gearmund lets, uh, or walks away, and as uh, Sigrun releases him, did it prompt a modifier, Dave? No. That, no. Maybe, maybe I didn't wait for this hero to pop up. I'll okay. Oh, there you are. Success. What you nice. hear, um, Ozer, is once again, the spirit has come to you. The cost. There is a cost. The toll will be paid. Ozer will nod and then sort of just sort of like steal himself, wrap his cloak tighter around him and then just sort of me grasp his helmet for a moment and it's like, yes, yes it will. You sail with dead men. <laughs> Seems unbothered by it. Is that correct, Ozer? Yes, it'll, it'll, he'll say it out loud and maybe someone will overhear him, but he'll say, uh, but he'll say, the flash <laughs> what was is that finite. Said? I said it yeah, like a, a red hen. Um. <laughs> no, he'll probably say, uh, the flesh is finite. The spirit is what matters. Hacken, you overhear this. Um... I'm like, I think Ozer gonna... usually says weird shit in general, but this is... Yeah, I think I might call on my uh, overconfidence at this point. Mm. Uh, not that I need to reset my luck, but just to check if I feel that... Sure, yeah, yeah, go ahead and give us a... I am confident in my... You got it under control, so you're not going to yeah. do anything reckless. So I, I I just feel yeah we've got we've got the skills to c overcome whatever is where we're going to. So he <laughs> gets mumbling, up, walks over to Ozer, looks him clear in the eyes, and says, "I can do a lot of push-ups." <laughs> so Played with that, that <laughs> evening comes. And Valgard, it does seem as if you managed to find a way to enjoy the wine of those monks, because you have well and truly passed out. <laughs> the rest of you are still awake. And I'd like everyone to give us a, let's see here. Uh, give us a will check, please. This is, so this is a fright check. And Gearmund, you've got plus four to it. Everyone other than Ozer has plus two. Um, everyone else has a plus two. And I don't think, Ozer, you've got any specific bonus, no. It did do something like that? No. Uh, and that this is going to be, hold on, there will be a modifier. Give me two seconds here. Yeah, I, I got plus two from fearlessness. Oh, yeah, fucking, oh, yeah, hell yeah. 
Never mind. So then uh, the difficulty of this fear is going to be a two. So basically, Gearman gets plus two. Everyone else is just rolling their will. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a modified nine then. Which is a success. Amazing. There is a fright underneath it, but we're actually doing the will, are we? Oh, you're doing fright. No, you, you can just roll fright. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Nice. Nice. Is that... Is that everyone? Oh, yeah, because uh, Valgrid's asleep. Yeah, 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 you do. yeah I'm asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the idea of Valgrid on his fifth bottle. Because it's just awful. I hate it. It's got ale and it just yeah. opens another one. I think he just tried... The I think only just tried every single bottle just in uh, case one tastes yeah. right. I've completely I've drunk, the, uh, I've drunk the Linda's Farm mead, so it's it's quite uh, strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, each of you feel in the there is something out there. There is something in the mists. You can hear it whispering. And Ozer, this is normally, you hear things, but this is very different than the norm. You can, in fact, Ozer, give us, hold on, what am I looking for here? Yes. You can use your detect weird ability if you choose, which would, I think it's just a perception check. Yeah. Oh, perception with minus two, forgive me. Because of the distance. Oof. Is your luck on cooldown? Uh, yes. Oh! Then, um, <laughs> how does Ozer feel not knowing what the fuck is out there? Doesn't like it. I think he'll be, he'll be pacing back and forth along the ship, just sort of peering out, trying to perceive, but the mists are blocking him in more than one way, so he's just sort of irritably pacing back and forth. So, as you are pacing back and forth, um, Sigrun, you were the one who first sees this. The f fog or mist at this point is so thick, it's up to the side of the ship. You could plunge your arm into it and lose sight of your hand. It is not a natural miss. It should not stop at the edge of a ship. And you were looking at that white curtain, trying to see what it is that is out there. No, I don't want that. I want... My internet's nowhere for Kevin not sent it. I don't see it. Yeah, no, I haven't put it up yet. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> trying to Can find I where... Load did I load it? Where did I load it? Come here. You know, I bulk loaded stuff. So I don't think this one give me two seconds. It, I guarantee you it'll be worth it. These uh, Ill Omen sessions have been fantastic, even though it's only my third one. I gotta say. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Creepy, creepy and weird and great, great crew. It speaks to the, yeah, the, the players are really what have made these sessions. But I've been really enjoying them. It's something we mentioned uh, yesterday after the session as well, but like one of the nice things with games like this is that it can be anything. Like this isn't a, a game where you're, as players you can necessarily read the game. You have no fucking idea what this stuff is. And like I, I tend to do that to a degree with a lot of my uh, content anyway, um, but it's even more so with this. What is this? Whatever's going on out there. Here we go. And 
and as the whispers are get oh sorry go ahead i was just gonna say it's a shark riding demon monkey isn't it (laughs) (laughs) you can hear the whispers getting closer you still can't quite make out what they're saying it is definitely a language actually sigrun and hacken oh it's the tongue of the saxons and what they are saying join us and what leans in from the fog somehow impossibly standing on the air or coalesced mist or who the fuck knows leans in and one of your crewmates the hand grabs them and they are pulled into the fog then two more then five (laughs) Ozer you hear that that phrase again what do you guys do let's oh you know what Click on, click on uh, your. Mm, I don't know if you need to click on your token. Out of an abundance of caution, click on your token. Click on initiative. The way initiative works is we just go in the order of speed. I'll so give you guys. You, you, oh, okay. Do you roll speed or? Nope, nope. It's just uh, whatever your. You should be able to just click on in. Click on your token and click on initiative. I think. Um, Let's see here. Combat? I well, think it's under combat because I thought we rolled combat or rolled initiative last time. Sorry. You don't actually yeah. roll it. It's just I'm, I want it to populate in the. Um, maybe it's on the general tab. Nope. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to add each of you in. If you could just. Add your oh oh it worked oh no it didn't these are from the last time <laughs> there's a clock <laughs> oh, there you go yeah yeah the clock hit that please uh it's at the bottom of uh, like if you look at all the dice in the general tab there's a clock right at the bottom and oh right, that, right it right puts your speed. speed into the right tab speed perfect yeah I'll get I'll get rid of there you go nice excellent. Okay. Sigrun and... So there are one, four, nine, 21 crew members left. Sigrun, what are you doing? And remember what maneuver you're doing and then we're in a second per second thing. Yeah, she'll just shout, we're being attacked and draw one. Okay, ready her sword? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gearbund. Ball out attack, axe, chop it to pieces. <laughs> so you have to ready your axe first, because it is an unready Okay, thing. ready yeah. my axe. Ready your axe. <laughs> Hacken. <laughs> yeah, draw my sword. Valgard. <laughs> Sleeping. What am I talking about? Ozer. <laughs> Get spear ready. Okay. Uh, Captain. Would you give us a 1d5 roll, please? 1d5. Of course. Can you actually do 1d5? Yep. Five? Does it... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do as many as you like. Oh. Oh, sorry, I was scrolled up. 17 crew left. Sigrun, you have your sword out. Attack. Movement attack, yeah. Uh, so uh, it would t- yeah, it's gonna be more than a step in order to get to where one of these things is. Okay, then full move. Full move, okay. So you run to the side, Gearman. Well, uh, ad- advance as quick as I can to try and hit them. Uh, I've, got, I've got reach. I've got reach. <laughs> you've got reach, yes. Yeah, so you're going to reach two way, and you could also spend, remember one of the options, you could spend a fatigue point to do a lunging strike. Yeah. Great lunge gives another plus one to reach. I think three yards would be enough for you to reach the side. Do that. 
Okay. So go ahead and give us a... Uh, on your attack under melee, go ahead and roll Great Axe. Uh, combat. Uh, on melee. Um, great Axe. Can I can I spend um, can I make it a um, a head a mighty blow? Yes. Oh, that's yeah. I'll be spending then two fatigue. Okay. Because you need a lunge and the other. So take two off your blue bar. Okay, that's and a hit. Let's see here. Ooh, that is a hit. Now let me make a dodge check for. This thing. You connect. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, nice. Um, sorry, right. Okay. So it's the, uh, little, the little exploding symbol. That is the damage one. Okay, and it's a mighty blow, but it was a lunging, so they cancel out. Okay. So that is, wow. Eight. Eight, eight cutting. Eight cutting. You could feel your massive axe bite into one of them, and one of your crew members is saved for the round. Hacken. Uh, I'm going to do a similar thing. I want to get to the nearest one and attack it. So if you want to do so, the lunging strike, your sword likewise has a range. Yeah. Go ahead and give us a attack with that. It'll cost you one fatigue for the lunging strike. Okay. If you want to do what Gearman did to like net out the penalty to damage, uh, just spend two fatigue. Yeah, because you can. Am I right in thinking you can spend those after the roll to see? You if can. You've yeah. 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 Succeeded. Well, no, no. But so, the, the lunging strike you need to do before because you, yeah, you already know that you're out of reach. Yeah. I'll spend one. Yeah. Uh, was there a modifier? Did you say minus two? Uh, no, not for the lunging strike. No. Oh, okay. No modifier. I've rolled the dodge. Nice. Nice. It's also a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Spend one more fatigue if you want to make it no with no damage penalty. I will do. Okay. Go um. ahead. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Another one saved as one of these black priests is cut down. Valgard, you're sleeping. Oh, Valgard, <laughs> give us a perception check at minus four. If I can open my eyes. <laughs> Perception. Oh God! Hey! <laughs> Jesus! So you are currently prone, but you are awake. Ozer, how are you yeah. doing? Can I tell if these would count as spirits? Most definitely. In that case, Ozer will try and exercise one of them. Exercise generally takes like. I think it's oh, 10 no. minutes per oh. point, right? It, it takes, it's a long involved oh, okay, process. Gotcha. Yeah. But you would know that. So what, what would you do yeah. instead? Uh, I think in that case, he will uh, lunge towards one of them and try and stab it with his spear. Your spear is one, in, one two as well, right? Um, yep, yep. Two, uh, two handed, you can get it. Yeah. So go right ahead. Uh, I'll roll the dodge for this thing. Has your luck reset? Uh, nope. No. Another 14 minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you seize this thing and uh, it is, uh, you're not able to connect with it. Um, Captain, would you give us a 1d5 minus 2 roll, please? Uh. Yeah, that's, that's the height of cruelty, what you're doing here. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> but you said no, that zero. none of your crew are down. Zero! Yeah! <laughs> Sigrun, what are you doing? Uh, she's going to do a... Uh, like a dual attack. Or a faint and then attack. So the All out attack? attack? All out attack. That means you do not have a defense if they choose to try and grab you. Pull you in. <laughs> you're fine? How's she rolling? How's she rolling today? Okay. And to be clear, so, your shield is not readied yet because you have not taken a round to ready your shield. No, because her shield's probably racked on the side of the ship and she'd have mm. to pull it down. That takes way too long. Okay. So then, uh, yeah, you stepped to the edge last time, right? Yeah, she just moved last time. So yeah, last so season. you're seeing one of these things coming out of the the fog. Cool. 
So it's a feint and then attack. Sure. So then the feint, the way it works is uh, you make a roll and then your margin of success becomes a penalty to the um, defense for the next attack. So go ahead and give us a broadsword. It does attack with your broadsword. Yep. Let me make sure I'm doing that right too. I'm trying to mix it up so we're all doing it. Oh yeah, and like a feint can be in- devastating. Especially if you're a skilled swords person. That's a margin of success of two. So of minus two to their uh, defenses. I'm just making sure. Okay, here we go. Feint. Faint, 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 faint. Faint. Uh, oh, sorry, they make a defense. It's the margin of success between the two. Okay, so I'm gonna make, I failed. So that'll be a plus, minus two to their next uh, defense. Go ahead and make your attack. Oh yeah, I very failed. So you just need to hit here, Sigrun. Hit. Yes, solid hit. Go ahead and roll damage. And then Gearmund. Nice. You hack into this thing. It cries out and disappears as a falling into the fog. You do not hear it hit the water, though. Garamond. Do I need to ready my axe? Yes. I will do that. Hacking? Um, I don't need to ready my axe, uh, my sword, do I? No. No. Can I do uh, rapid strike? Or yeah, absolutely. Strike. Yep. Is there more than there, one in range? There is or? not one in range. The next, uh, the nearest one, is three yards away. All right, I won't do that then. I'll, I'll do the same as last turn and do the uh, the great lunge, lunge so yeah. I can get to him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. One of those. So you're almost like scrambling across the decks here. Okay. That is a hit. Uh, I failed my dodge. Okay, I shall spend another point to... Turns out a tendency to roll sixes is not great in a game where you're rolling under. Holy shit! Wow. Wow. I think what? not only do you carve this thing, you actually like manage to tag it and drag part of it in, and as it hits the ground, you know you hit flesh, but as soon as it hits the ground, there's a drenched black robe that hits there and nothing else. Valgard, you're I prone. I sit up and rub my eyes. Okay. <laughs> Ozer. <laughs> I will try and do an all-out attack on the one I failed to hit last time. Okay, go right ahead. Spear. Mm, but you got second. Are you going to be all out attacking with a second attack? Or are you going to. Because all attack, you got a couple options. You can feint an attack, you can attack twice, or you can do a mighty blow where you're trying to do more damage. I'll, I'll try and attack a second time. Go right ahead. Come on. Mm. Yep. Ah. Okay. Uh, then. Captain, 1d5 minus 2. Please. I'm gonna get uh, Take, taking four of them down though. Yeah. Minus two. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen crew members left. Uh, Ozer, you hear in your mind once again. The price must be paid. Oh, that's, why it's more. that's why it's not hitting. It's not really trying. Uh, heroic yeah, I'm thinking... Coward? Sorry. <laughs> not calling you out, David. <laughs> uh, well, I am, but I'm not really here. Um, so, Heroic Charge, spend one uh, point to move an attack without penalty. Is that enough move to get... You just dispatch one. Time. What is your move? It's four? 
I think your move is a four in uh, in armor. So yes, that that's enough. I just rolled one is only yeah. It, it's like the other side of the ship. So if you wish to move and attack, you can certainly do so. Okay, so she'll move and attack. Okay, so it'll be one fatigue. And then, do I have to declare if I want to do a great attack? Uh, well, no, because you, your move and attack, you have to do a single attack. attack. No, I mean like uh, like a uh, mighty attack. Is that was for extra damage. For extra, oh, with the, the extra effort. Yeah. Uh, you can spend afterwards if you like. See if you hit. Okay. Let's see here. Mm. I've already clicked it. <laughs> It's, okay. it's coming your way. Yeah, I did successfully dodge in any event. Uh, so oh. if it does come in... Oh, that would have been a hit, too. And it <laughs> ducks to the side. Uh, Gearmund, your axe is ready. Yeah, I'm going to use the... Like, can I use the axe? Yep, there's another one coming in within one yard. Right. Oh, well, it's going to get a... It's going to get a chop. Okay. Um, oh, come on. Right. Uh, and are you using attack? Jesus. Oh, do you have? I'm going to. I, I'm going to use my luck and reroll. Has it reset? I've. How many luck do we get? Uh, you, you, as soon as you use luck, you have to wait an hour, and then it resets. Oh, we, and we got one point of luck. Only one point of luck. In which case, I'm not using luck. Then. Okay, then. <laughs> five, five, six. Would you give us? Let's see here. Uh, 3d8 roll, please. Uh, th uh, sorry, 3d6, not 3d8. What am I fucking talking about? An 11. Shit. You drop the weapon. So you swing at this thing, and I guess maybe it catches the side. But, your axe is out of your hands. Hacken. Uh, is there anyone within range at the moment? Um... Let's see. Oh, yeah, right. You just hack the other one down. Yep, within one yard. Uh, and what's the one that gives them less defense? Uh, uh, that would be that... a deceptive attack. So it would be minus two to um, every minus two that you take to your attack is minus one to their uh, defenses. Okay. Uh, I shall do... I'll just do minus one, so I'll, I'll take a minus two penalty. Go right ahead. Uh, minus two. Uh, and, okay. Um, is your f luck on cooldown as well? Uh, no, it isn't, actually. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do my luck. Okay. So, I'll attack again. Minus two. Uh, so hit. Does it make? It doesn't make any difference, does it? Uh, the oh, you no, know, you could get a critical hit. Oh, try okay. third well, one, yeah. I'll do. Okay, so that is a solid hit. Uh, go ahead and roll damage, and then Valgar. He uh, <laughs> so he goes to stand up now, and he goes to grab his sword beside him, but all there is is an empty wine bottle. So, uh, yeah, I love the narrative, but remember one second. You're standing up. Ron, I'm saying he's picking it up as he's, like, he thinks he's you picking up his both. sword as he's standing up. Oh, you, you can, can stand up. up. One second. Well, then one he picks his sword up instead. Well, he tries to. Okay, so instead you, of stand up. Okay, so you grab... Because it's beside him on the ground. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Pulls up a wine bottle. Valgard? You feel hands have grabbed you, and you're being dragged on your ass across the ship. What? Ozer? Well, there might be an element of truth to Zigrun's accusation that, that, that knowing that the price has to be paid, maybe that's what's making him sort of, he will try and do a determined attack uh, mm -hmm. against one of these two, two uh, Okay. So plus four. Come on. 
Yeah. Excellent. Okay, solid hit. And I do not dodge. So you hit, go ahead, roll damage. Yeah. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> then. But it's an impaling too. Let's see here. Did no one kill one this round? Yeah, I killed one. You killed one? Yeah, I did 13 damage. Oh, yes, then you absolutely killed one. Uh, 1d5 minus 1, please. None! But, but Gearman, you see out of the corner of your eye, Valgard, there is a black robe figure dragging Valgard away. Sigrun. Uh, she's going to go back to uh, the faint and attack because that worked well for her the first time. Okay. Get it to dodge her first attack, hopefully. Okay. That's a hit. Uh, you. Uh, you beat it, so you're going to have minus one to its defense. Go ahead and make your second attack. Um, I'll, I'll have dodged in any event. So you duck it, but then it's out of the way. Uh, Gearmund. Um, can I fast draw my sword? You can try. Yeah, yeah. Give us a fast draw. I'm going to try a fast draw and, and chop at the one that's dragging. Well, uh, if I can. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we can get all that done. Yeah. So let's do your fast draw first. Nice. <laughs> the sword is out, and then okay. probably a lunge because this thing's got a reach of uh, a reach of one. So you could probably okay. stride one and then. Uh, so this be one, uh, and then go ahead and give us your attack. Solid hit. It tries to let go of Valgard to avoid your blow, and all it manages to do is let go of Valgard. Go ahead and roll damage. Nice. I was assuming there was a chopping one. Yeah. Ah, another one down. Hack on. Uh, any nearby? Uh, the nearest one is five yards away. Uh, I'll do a heroic charge. I'll spend a, okay. a, a point to... Uh, Fatigue? Yeah! yeah run across and make an attack. Captain, saving one of your crew members, particularly a named crew member, will restore your luck. Oh, critical hit. Holy shit! Nice. First crit! Five, five, six. Go ahead and give us a 3d8, 3d6 roll, please. Wow. <laughs> Twelve. Normal damage and the victim drops anything he's holding regardless of whether any damage penetrates DR. So you race in and rah, go ahead and roll damage. I don't think this thing's going to be around to do. Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, swing and rah, another one is gone. Valgard, you've been released. There's a little friction on your butt, but you do have a wine bottle in your hand. An empty one. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I stand up. Okay, so you scrabble to your feet. Ozer? I will try to evaluate. Mmm. Go ahead and give us a... I think a perception check. Because this is sort of your spirit empathy, trying to read what these things want. No penalty one way or the other. They will they are looking for an offering of substance. And your eyes fall on Brother Viator. Top of the round. Now, uh Gearman took out one, Hacken took out one. I think that's it, right? 
1d5 minus 2, please. So 13. <sighs> Sigrin, what are you doing? Oh, actually, hold oh, on, Sigrin. Oh. I just got a critical hit on you. Oh. Yeah, because and you didn't defend. Crash. So, would you give us a three d six roll, please? Everything's in the way. Turn oh, sorry, Dave. I should have rolled that as myself. Okay. Let's see. Did you want me to roll it? Or you oh, oh sorry. It? Yeah, no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if we were, you had rolled it. I'll roll it here. 15. No, no. Oh, Sigrin, you are dragged. You drop your sword, and you're about to go over the side. Would you give us a strength check, please? Oosh. I just got a... Uh, margin of success of three. Whoa. Uh, okay. Um, uh, check. Here we go. Hopefully I don't need a will flip. Come okay, on. Yeah. <laughs> my, my luck is uh, my luck was reset, so I can reroll. That awesome! Yeah, go ahead. And give us a uh, so re roll that twice yeah. more. And Gearman, you, you would hear the scream of your cousin from the far end of the ship. I will give context here too. I think most of you guys, because of your armor and stuff you're wearing, have a move of like three or four. Hacken has a move of seven. Right. Go. Oh. He needs to beat you. You could roll one more time. You may. Oh. No. <laughs> so Sigan, she's this thing's dragging you along. You drop your sword, but you're able to uh, grab onto the side. Um, Gearmond, what are you doing? Actually, Sigrin, this is your action. Do you want to try and free yourself here? Yes. Give us a strength roll. I actually failed mine. And then Gearmond, it's your turn. I mean, is is this thing um, engaged fully in trying to p pull Sigrun away? Over the in which side. Case I will, it's yeah, always... In which case, I will all-out all attack it then. Okay. Um, which I'll have to remind myself what that does. But um... So all-out attack. Nice. All right. Sigrun is holding on still. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, you would have freed yourself. So Sigrun is just hanging over the side of the ship right now. Um, and that thing is circling around to get it. You would only be able to move half your move with an all-out attack. Okay, a, okay. Move and attack would allow you to move your full move, but you take, um, yeah, you're, uh, normally your weapon skill is capped at a nine for any attack at the end of that, but uh, you could spend a fatigue point to a heroic charge, move, and then make an attack. I'll do the heroic charge then. Okay. Your, oh, your move is a three. Okay. But you got... Oh, you get that stupid sword out now. Uh, I don't. I don't have the axe. No. Yeah. Um, I can't. I can't get there. Is what you're saying? I'm. Well, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll to see how far away. It's five sure. away. So between okay. what you would need to do is spend one. If you don't want to take a penalty to the attack, you have to spend one fatigue to heroic charge three yards. Then spend one more fatigue to add to lunge to get the extra point, oh, okay. the extra point of reach, because your broadsword already reaches one away. Yep. Um, okay, so is there any modifier to my attack on that? No, uh, no modifier. Otherwise, just, okay. if you're, as long as you're spending that fatigue. So you should be like three more down, I think, because you did your heroic lunge last time, too. So you should be at a seven for your fatigue after this. But go right ahead. Oh, I, I pressed it. Did I scroll down? 
Let's see here. Did it prompt you for modifiers? Yep. Okay. <laughs> It's not, do it again. it's not quite the... Uh, it should be coming. If yeah. the zero doesn't pop up, then it didn't... One time I didn't wait for the zero to populate in the box, it didn't show, so I... Okay, let me just try it again. So, yeah, sure. We used so to have that happen a, with uh, um, the AD&D would, second sheet, too. Remember, if you were, so we rolled too quickly, it would, would just... Would this be a thrust rather than a, a swing? Uh... Both of those have a reach of one, so you could... Your okay, choice. Okay, fine, then. So I'll try that again. Oh, there you go. There you go. Solid hit. Uh, did not dodge. Go ahead, roll damage. <sighs> These robes offer very little defense against your attacks. Uh, so, Sigrun, you see Gearmund hack something above you. Hack on. What are you doing? Uh, nearest enemy and charge. Okay. So, uh, uh, do I need to spend to get to it, or is it close oh, enough? Oh, uh, I'll tell you. Sorry. Uh, four yards away. Uh, yeah, so I'll spend uh, a point to okay. all right, charge it. Yeah. Um, swing away. Um, swing away. Okay, I failed my dodge. Go ahead and roll damage. Wow! Another Same. one gone, and then okay. Valgard, you are up now. You have a wine bottle in your hand. What are you doing? Uh, I'm. Just, I gotta scan the ship and figure out what's going on because he's kind of disoriented. Sure. Why don't you give us a perception check? And if you succeed on this, uh, yeah, you're hey. gonna be able. To, so next round, assume that you have perfectly taken in the scene. Yeah, you can, like what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ozer, what are you doing? Uther will shout towards Harkon. Harkon, give them the Christ priest. <laughs> they demand tribute. All right. We have one, two, two down this round. 1d5 minus two, please. None lost this round. <laughs> yeah. 13 crew still. Sigrun, what are you doing? Uh, she's going to hustle to her sword. Well, you're hanging over the side. You want to pull yourself back oh. up the ship? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and give us a strength check. And then, Germond, you're standing over her. What are you doing? Are there any things around? The nearest one is five yards away. Uh, um. You have heard what uh, Ozer said, though. He said that clearly in Old Norse. And the priest of the Christ God is only two yards away from you. Okay. Um, I will take the priest and I don't know. You had mentioned, uh, actually, Graham, you had mentioned that you were interested in taking the, the game out for a full kind of test run kind of thing. Hmm. Might I suggest then yep. a slam? Okay, do it. So what you're going to do <laughs> is to collide with the opponent. You can use attack, all out attack, or move and attack. Uh, I'll do move and attack. If you want to spend one fatigue, then you won't take a penalty. Then it is uh, dex, brawling, or sumo wrestling to hit. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go brawling. Oh, you know what? Hey, hold on. Sorry, you can save the um, save that fatigue point because the minus four to hit and the effective skull cap of nine for a moving attack don't apply for slams. Right. Slam. Okay. I have nothing. What is your hit point? Total. Well, oh, it's on the sheet here. Hit. I can see 13. Fucking Madison, 13. read it. You Egypt. Okay, so that is 13. Uh, here we go. 13 times 4 for your speed. Uh, 100. Okay. Go ahead and roll 
1d6. Yes! He needs to make a dex check. Okay, that 15 is ill-timed. Why don't you tell us, Gearman, what it looks like as you send this priest of the Christ God off your ship. I shall bellow um, um, enough uh, in, enough of your whisperings, uh, priest. Now, you, you say it is our doom. I think you'll find it is yours. And at that, I shall basically throw him bodily off the ship. You race in and you hit him and he's, oh, no, I saw it. Ah! He falls off into the mist and almost as soon as that happens, silence reigns once again. Ah. Mid-session break. And a mid-session break, correct. <laughs> we'll be, for those listening at home, we'll be back in about five minutes. And I can get rid of this token now. And we'll see Valgar what happens next. He goes to try to take a sip of the empty wine bottle. He goes, what did I miss? Chucks it into the water. <laughs> <laughs> Another sacrifice. <laughs> uh, so good.
All right. So Gearmond, I, re I forgot, has fit as well, which means he'll get a fatigue point back every five minutes. All right. So okay. that's like 25 minutes. He's right as rain. Yep. I don't think Hakon does, though. No, Hakon would take uh, 10 minutes per fatigue point. So that's uh, six, I guess, you need back. So that's an hour for Hakon to fully catch his breath once again. Valgard has managed to catch his uh, wine, so there, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right, then. <laughs> so you, and you'll have a chance to collect your uh, I can tell you, you can restore your fatigue points back up to full, there's nothing that's going to happen within the next hour there is a eerie silence but you do have 13 crew members left still so there is that 13 out of 60 yeah. more treasure and ale for the rest of us But we have found uh, neither. Uh, yeah. So, Hacken, you can restore your fatigue points as well, if you'd like. Okay. While Dave's waiting, I'll get his back as well. There we go. So, we are all back. Then. As everyone is panting and catching their breath. <laughs> Ozer. <laughs> the way is lit. I think we need to swap out this for something a little more contemplative. What you can see, Ozer, after hearing that whisper, that familiar whisper, there is a bright orange light ahead and to the left of your ship. You cannot see the source, but you are certain from the flickering of it. It is an enormous flame high up, either on a hill in a tower or otherwise suspended in the air. Uzer will make his way over to Girmund. The captain, the price has been paid. Towards the light we must go. A heavy price. I will limp towards, presumably, the shore. There must be... Can. Care must be taken here, for sure. Yeah. Why don't you give us, Captain... Uh, and let's reset everyone's luck. That will allow everyone to immediately use it. And then <laughs> yeah. immediately call on their disadvantage and then use it one more time before the end of the session. So what is the rest of the... Let me actually roll this here. Captain, would you give us a 3d6 roll, please? Fourteen. Your crew perhaps understandably, is faltering. Yeah. Now, would you give us a 3D... Uh, 3D6 plus 4 roll, please. Who's shot? Okay. Of the 13 crew members, half of them have fallen into a state of unconsciousness. 
sheer fright mm. of what has happened and the lighting of the fire. You can hear one of them uh, calls out, Muspelheim, we are in Muspelheim. We need to dine with Sert. If you are to bring the crew in, you must either rally uh, their morale uh, or undertake bringing the vessel in yourself. Uh, should we bring the vessel in? Can we do that? Can yeah. I call on my kinsmen? And uh, those that are around me that are still standing to, to bring the ship in. Why don't you give us a, just an IQ roll, uh, Kierman, no modifier. No. You are bringing the ship in. Tell me, while Gearman is, is manning the rudder, what are Hacken, Ozer, Valgard, and Sigrun doing to help control the ship? The rest of the crew has been seemingly, uh, their spirits have been broken. Probably, sadly, I'm just manning one of the oars. <laughs> You know, the actually, let me... does not usually like to do. Jeff, one of your abilities is an ability called Enthrallment Suggest. Oh. What that is, is a way of supernaturally performing and then forcing the audience to do what you suggest. <clears throat> oh. That's under my tr uh, traits? Under your skills. Enthrallment suggest and enthrallment persuade are two supernaturally you perform and then. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, what is it that you think you you do? Are you uh, playing something, a song, or are you telling a uh, an epic? Yeah, I think he's. Um... He's telling the epic tale of our journey so far up to this moment, you know, and sort of like all the sacrifices we've made. He's probably listing the the men that we've lost, their names, sort of like as, um, you know, we can't have let them go for nothing. And so he's sort of like listing them. That's awesome. Why don't you take a plus two to your uh, enthrall Suggest roll. Oh, wow! Nice. So, what do we see as the? They're not necessarily. Um. They're animated effectively by your, the power of your song. Right. So like, are they, yeah, they're almost still asleep, but they're like rowing probably in perfect rhythm with Valgard. Yeah. Sort of almost as if he is like row there, you know, he's, you know, you've seen those like puppets they have where you, you know, the one guy's moving and it looks like five people are dancing all at the same time. It's sort of like that, like as he's rowing, they're all sort of perfectly rowing with him. So as that will offset two points, of your roll, Gearmond, you need only one more point to make that a success. Hakan, Ozer, or Sigrun, any ideas? I think Hakan will just fall back on his, his strength once again. He'll go to the front row of oars and he'll just stand with an oar in each arm and it will just try and propel this boat, and we are going to get there. And he's just going to. So I think it'll be at a minus two, because that's, that's a pretty impressive oh, yeah. feat, but uh, strength at minus two, please. Come on, Green. Look at that! <laughs> <All right. laughs> Gearman with your cruise 
efforts, they mm. have assisted in achieving the impossible. And not to take anything away from your seamanship, but you are the one who navigates it in, and at the last moment, brings your ship in along a stone dock that suddenly appears from nowhere. A dock. Okay. And as you go in, the light of the flame cuts out as soon as you see where your stone dock ends, a sandy beach. And to your left, the fog seems fading. There is a massive hill and a squat structure with a tall single tower mm. atop it. Uh. Ozer, <laughs> this is the tower. We are here, Captain. This is this where we are meant to be? Uh. Um, what, what do I gauge? Do I? How do I gauge? No, I think we need to press on now. I think. I think if we, if we wait, it's just. It's just going to get worse. So, uh, type the ship. Secure the ship against the dock. Okay. Um. Just tell everyone to uh, equip up. Uh, we're going to the tower. Give us a leadership check, please. I'll grant you yeah, another yeah. plus two to this because of. Uh, Valgard's efforts. Um, they will come. Ooh, good call. Uh, Sigrun, would you give us a perception check, please? So they're coming, Gearman, but you can tell. I mean, you have your luck back, so you could luck that as well. But there is... Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I will do the luck because I, I want them to come um, because they okay. want to come. Um, I'll make another couple of goes at that. Okay. There uh, you go. I'll do another one just for good measure. Yeah, you should crit. Yeah, I could do. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. So, what... Um, what is it that you say to get them? You know your men better than any on this crew. Um, I suppose I'll pick up on uh, Valgard's. Um, it'd be like a refrain to Valgard's uh, encouragement and song, and to say, um, um, "This is our. This is our time. Um, you were not taken away. You were kept on this boat." And now is our time to prove who we are. And you can tell from the steely looks you get back that they have full faith in your captaincy. More than I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a perception roll coming there, Sigrun? Yep. I didn't want to interrupt the dialogue. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Valgard, while we're waiting to see the result, uh, Valgard, Ozer, or Hakan, anything you wish to do? Uzer will be focused on the tower, so he'll, he'll probably open himself up to the, the spirit realm and see if he can detect any presences mm. ahead. Yeah, yeah. You need to make a roll for this, and let me show you what. No others can see the light, but you. can see atop the tower mm. and it is looking down at you, Ozer. One thing I'll point out that Girmund, Hack and Valgarden Sigrid, to a lesser degree, you would all know Ozer's inability to lie or great difficulty with it. Uh, so I think that would that you wish to confront 
or ask Ozer anything, you can almost certainly rely on receiving the truth from him. I'm not saying that you wouldn't have to do it at this point. It's just something that your yeah. characters would absolutely well, know. Well, I mean, that. is he reacting to this at all? Um, yeah, what is Ozer doing? Yeah, like, David, what do you think? I, I think he'll, he'll, assuming that the ship isn't you know, too far away, but he'll, he'll almost, like, forget about his companions and, and the crew. He'll just sort of start heading up towards the tower, but even waiting for Sigrun to give mm. the all clear or... He probably won't even listen to the end of Gearman's speech. He'll just set off up the hill in a very sort of determined that that's where he needs to be. Everything else has been uh, prologue. He's just going to head up that hill now. So Sigrid, you're mm. the one who, because you were listening out and you hear the sound of feet hitting this, this rocky beach. And you look over and you can see Ozer is just walking out into the darkness in the direction of the hill. So Valgar, does that answer your... Question? Yeah. Yeah. My thing. Ozer. So you just finished giving your speech of Gearman. You look over <laughs> Ozer with a distinctive, you know, wolf like wooden helm is now about ten yards away from the ship, making his way up the beach towards the the hill and the waiting edifice. I will hurry to jo I will hurry to join him. Easily can. And, yeah. And quietly, quietly I'll say to him, what do you see, Oza? Hmm. Quietly. I don't, think, I don't think the rest can handle the truth from him. <laughs> the future, Captain. Future. Revelation. Do you not see the flame? Do you not see yeah. what it, the promise it holds? Gimond already knows that whatever we find will not be worth it. That's, that's what he's thinking. None of our fellows can see this, but in... Uh, are you bringing the full crew with you as well? Mm-hmm. So we would see, like, Ozer at the front, then Gearmond, and then maybe our named heroes, and the others sort of trailing behind, all making your way along. If you had Ozer's sight... Dozens of these follow along behind Ozer, urging him on. He calls, he calls, he calls, he calls, he calls, he calls. Dane Gehrman, might I suggest you leave five or six men with the ship? There is another ship out there. There is. We want to make sure we have a way home. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's that, that's reasonable Sigrun, that's good advice. Um, so we'll leave, I'll leave five on the ship. Okay, so you have eight with you and five on the ship. Yeah. What you guys find is that there is a path here. It appears that someone has been making their way up, stony and barren. It seems to take, it should only take you 15 minutes, maybe 20 to reach the top of the ship, but it feels like you are walking for an hour. And when you finally reach the top, what you can see is a stony wall surrounding a stone structure with one single tower. The structure and the stone and, and the walls and the tower, to all of your eyes but one, is pitch black. There's no sign of life within. But Ozer, that blazing spirit, still looks down at you. You are able to find a rampart that leads up. I'll give you... You have not a guide here. He has joined the Black Monks of the Fog. But this is a rough layout of the structure. The bottom is the ground floor. The top is the first floor or second floor, depending on what part of the world you're from. You 
And then there is the tower, of course. What you can see here is, oh, wrong thing, where's my, oh, this is right. This rampart at the mm -hmm. top of the hill leads up and then around. There are arrow slits in here. Curious for a temple or monastery. But there is a heavy wooden door that seals this as if it is a fortress. You guys oh, could. Did you say a, a big heavy door? I did say. <laughs> Would you care to deploy I your axe? I should deploy the axe if I still have it, yeah. Heck, no, you've recovered. It didn't fall overboard or anything. You just oh, okay. ha happened no. to drop it is all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, so I'll, just uh, go ahead and roll damage for us. You're going to automatically oh, hit. Oh, just does damage, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, where, where, where the hell is that? Oh, it's combat, isn't it? Damage. Uh, axe. Sigrun wonders if Gearman paid off some of the crew to like check doors and say they're locked when they're not really, so they can use his axe more often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that will take you. It's less than a minute. Actually, it's way less than that. Hold on. So that. Uh... Wow. It is less than 10 seconds of Gearman <laughs> hitting this door before he splinters through and destroys the bolt that was holding it in place or the, the beam. And the door creaks open. And I'll sort of crouch slightly as soon as it happens. So I'm sort of taking a defensive posture. Yeah. cannot see anyone from where you are. There is a dark gateway that seems to lead through to an open courtyard. Do we think to bring any any torches or anything there? Mm. So Gearman maybe says that, and Ozer, all you can think is like, why would you ever need additional light? Because yeah. <laughs> you are mm. bathed as if in the light of the noonday mm. sun. I think as soon as the door is, 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 is there's enough opening there for someone to step through, Oza will just head inside. So as you walk, so Oza seems to walk right past. What, do any of you do anything? Uh, I'm going to quickly follow him through. Save some of the treasure for us! Okay. <laughs> Sigrun, Hakan, and Girmund? Sigrun, uh... Um steps in it behind Ozer as quick as she can and whispers, if this is a trap, your immortal soul walking the fields of purgatory forever. I'll try and say some words to the, to the crew that are left that have come up just to say, you know, um, keep your wits about you. Um, um, guard your shield, brother. Let's go in. You, as you're walking in, Ozer, you step forward, and what you can see at the end, the southern end, if you will, I don't know what direction it means, the bottom of the map, so the southern end here, there is a figure standing there. And they... remember how many T's there were in this word. <laughs> I want to look it up. <laughs> At the 
far end. Long, dark robes, nearly identical to those of the priests of the Christ God, stands. And each of you can see there is a burning light, almost like well-fed embers burning in its eyes and a symbol on its forehead. It says something to you, Ozer, as you are at the lead. You don't understand the language, though, but it... Give us an IQ check, please. Anna wishes you luck. Thank you. Nice. You heard... Uh, Brother Viator speaking a language that sounds like this to Sigrun when you were jealous. Mm. Yeah, I think he'll 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 stop and then sort of turn around and Sigrun. Sigrun is there with your her sword. Uh, I think she promised uh, to fucking murder you if you. <laughs> <laughs> She's right behind you. You turn around and it's like over your shoulder. Yeah. Uh, Maybe, maybe yeah, I was, I wasn't fully aware of that. She sort of like turns around to call for Zigrin and realizes that that you arrived there. What did he say, Zigrin? Translate, quick. What did he say? Was it so, loud enough for me to hear? Or? Uh, you, you did not hear it yet. This thing turns to you. You can all see this. You're all standing. Unless you tell me otherwise, you're all standing kind of clustered around where Ozer is. You can hear mm-hmm. your, your men, Gearman, are beginning to lose nerve. This is terrifying to them. Yeah, that blame. What do you say, Sigrun? Yourself, creature. So I didn't catch that. What was it? Repeat yourself. It looks... And it says... In Latin, Uh, I am Gaius Claudius Longinus. Who are you to come to the Monastery of Secrets? The name might mean something to the players. It does not to the characters. (laughs) I am the bridge. You await the seething door, then. Did she repeat the text that um, Brother Viator had been writing on the thing that she committed to memory? Sorry, Dave, I'm I'm having... Are you guys having a hard time hearing? He seems like he's breaking up a bit. Oh, okay, let me see. That was just quiet. I I heard what he said. Oh, okay. She repeats uh, the okay. text that the brother had written in the in the book. Yeah. Sweet nods. The seething door awaits. And All in Latin Ozer. once again. Yeah. Then she looks to Ozer. She says, "The seething door awaits." What door? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I would invoke Ozer's truthfulness because I think it yeah, depends yeah. him, but he will. I, I actually, I'll, I'll roll for it first. Yeah. Um, so it's three d six, uh, six or less, and you can resist it. And it wishes you luck again. <gasps> you wow. can lie. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing. Uh, I, but I, I think what's in is the fact that he cannot understand what this figure is saying, and that therefore knowledge might elude him. It's, it's just it's, it's not sitting well with him. So I, I think, in a moment of weakness, he will decide not to lie, even though he could. Uh, and, and he will just look at Girman and Zigrund and, and Valgard and Hakon and, and sort of. Slightly dejected, would say, 
I do not know been called to this place, but do, I do not know what awaits beyond this door or what this door is. Just know that we need to get there. It is important. Well, I hope it's a revelation. Hmm. Well, I just stand forward, walk up to this uh, Longinus. As soon as you get within ten paces of it, it dissipates into smoke. Yeah. Now, hmm. door. You can all see. Blazing oh. above the top of the tower. What? Would you give us everyone a fright check at minus? So, if, so uh, everyone's making a fright check at no modifier, except for Gearman gets plus two. Nice. Critical success, Sigrun. Wow. So, uh, is your luck in cooldown, or do you have your luck right now? Uh, it's in cooldown. You got it back. There is something that is causing you to gain your nerve once again. Uh, now, would you, Captain, give us a 3d6 roll for the crew? Surter, it is Surter. Uh, they have fled. Unless you wish to try and do something to stop them. No. They even put their hand on Jeremy's shoulder. It might be better if they're not here. Yeah. Cowards. I'll step forward. You think about <laughs> how? Hakon, you think Valhalla awaits us here? There's only one way to find out. True. So. Feels like we're already there. What the do door. you guys wish to do? There is a door that is. Oops. Right there. Would you each give us a perception check, please? Vision or, or everything? Say again? Vision or everything? Uh, hearing, actually, this time. Our mine's the same, I found. Okay. Yeah, I don't think any of you have uh, specific sense-related bonuses. Oh, yeah, they're all... Yeah. Okay. So, Valgard and Ozer, you can hear at the far end where you came from. Uh, the shifting of the loose stones in this courtyard under something's booted feet. You look back. And what you see standing there Mm. A face you both recognize and do not. Scapty gray cloak, or at least who once was Scapty. Mm. 
Sikrin, Gearman, you do not hear that. So, like, Gearman and Hakan have started striding forward towards the door into this monastery. What do Valgard, Sigrin, and ha uh, Ozer say? They will, will shout out a warning. Okay. What does he say? Probably shout out to him. Like, I think as an initial, just start out like, just like scapty, and so and then realize that it's not the scapty we we have heard of. You know that something bad happened to him. German, like, you you hear this, and you look around, and obviously, he has changed, but you recognize your Jarl's mortal foe. Scapti Grey Cloak. With those burning, literally, eyes, a seething axe, and seeming fire in his hand, he stands at the darkened end of the courtyard, and he's shaking his head like this. What do you do? I'll, can I speak to him? Can I say, what have you found? When he I'm speaks, say, yeah. it sounds like his voice is coming from a bellows, like a, uh, or a, a, fur, a um, forge with its bellows <laughs> bringing it to, to fiery life. Mm -hmm. and what he says, power. And he raises his seething axe and points it in the direction of the tower. This is not for you, Girmond the Tall. And he places it against his chest. She can hear the sizzling of his flesh as he holds it and then brings it away, steam coming from it. I have paid the price for this. Stand aside. I will send you to hell quickly. You, you know I can't do that, Scalpy. You know I can't do that. Um, doubt my Viking pride. Um, guess step forward. Okay. Then, um, what? where's Hakon when I need him? <laughs> <laughs> Hakon has probably has heard this as well, so he may be trying to take a lead from you. Let's do this. <laughs> what are these cigarettes, Do I have Valgard? You still here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no chivalric code here. We just need to chop this thing down, I think. Absolutely. Now, bear with me two seconds. I'm going to quickly... I did not uh, think to set up a map. We're just going to set up a very basic, empty yeah, yeah, kind of sure. area for you guys to move. So it'll be fun for you to actually be able to maneuver around here, I think. I mean, who doesn't want to get hit by a seething axe from an undead... <laughs> Yar, oh, right? Really don't want yeah. to do that. You had the on, on your list for the weekend to do lawn, <laughs> groceries, fight Draugr. I was actually planning on that later, but uh, <laughs> we'll push it forward. Good, good. All right. Let's use. Hmm. Hmm. 
you know what? I'm going to fuck around and waste too much time. So let's just do this. Let's do... Uh, here we go. Boy, I just could not get an empty one to save my life here. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. Hold on. Anybody's liking the Norse adventure and wants to beat some great Norse fantasy? Ooh. Shadow mm. of the Gods by John Gwynn. I'm about halfway through the first book in it. You're all right. Nice. Let's just make a note of that. It's Norse inspired, so he doesn't use like all the regular Norse god stuff. He's kind of had his own thing, but. Yeah. So inspired by. Cool. Yeah, so it's like Norse like characters, but the gods killed themselves off. Not much of a spoil, because that's how the setting. The gods killed them all, all off, and you're living in a godless land. Nice. Okay. So, I believe this should be measuring properly here. Look at that. And let's bring our heroes, forgive me, our Vikings, over here. Um, okay, grab everybody, Roger included. Ooh, wrong map. Come on, Madison. There we go. This is going to be easily the most boring looking map <laughs> that we've had, but it's an open fucking <laughs> courtyard, so I don't know how much I need to do to make it look sexy, but uh, it does not look... <laughs> Throw some player bodies around. That's the... <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'll add blood spatter. Blech. Okay, so there's uh, hack here's on. A, here's a dead sacred. Those are. I will say I are um, the map you were looking at. Then <laughs> I drew that over lunch today. I was trying to cram my craw between sessions <laughs> and add it together because I couldn't find a really decent, or at least one that I was happy with, a map to uh, function for this uh, particular monastery, for the Monastery of Secrets. Okay. So, I think... How many yards is that? 15 yards, that's probably plenty. So, guys, let me bring you over here. And I want you to prepare to be dazzled at how uh, right. truly it is a feast for the eyes. And there you are. <laughs> the gray fastness. Now, let me add. Uh, oh, if everyone could kindly, once again, click on their little clock. Let me just give me two seconds to clear this. Boom. Go ahead and click on your token and click on your clock. And then I will try and clean it. <laughs> there we go. All righty. And this is not sad any longer. I think. I think this calls for Dave's favorite. <laughs> Death and axes. <laughs> Both a terrific track and a fun pun. There we go. All right, we got everyone in there. I just need to add the Draugr. Oosh. Turn that down just a scooch. All right, guys. 
Everyone is in. Why is Calidor in the bottom right of the map? Uh, probably. Oh yeah, <laughs> left over. I'm looking for the bad guy, and I found a Calidor. I'm like, what's yeah. going on? He's to the north of the map. Okay, so, uh, oh, and you know what? I'm think, Gearman. Let me just swap sides for you guys here. Don't you worry what Calidor's up to. <laughs> <laughs> Hack on Valgard. There we go. It's from basically from where you guys had said each other were. That's that's probably the right area. And I think that over let's see here. The wall of the monastery is probably like over here, guys. It's a little straighter than that line, <laughs> but you get the <laughs> sense. I'm not sure the wall is gonna really play into your strategy here, so. First up is the Traugr of Skapti Greycloak. So, he is going to move. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Sigrun, what are you doing? Going to move. So again, remember, uh, you choose your maneuver, that tells you what you can do this round. So if you can just yeah. announce what your maneuver is, if it's move, then you're just moving whatever your maximum move is. And that's your speed or your move? Your your, no, no, it'll be your, for you, it'll be your four. It'll be four, because your move is affected by how much encumbrance you have. And you got a okay. shield, and you got. I'm assuming everyone's shields and whatever else are out and ready. Gearman, what do you have out? Do you have your axe, or do you have your um, sword and board? That's, inter that's interesting, actually. I think I think you might go for sword and shield. Okay, so we're assuming both time. are ready right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Sigrid, you're gonna if you're gonna move, then you can move four. Yeah, she move four. Gearman, what are you doing? Move. Okay, hack on. Yeah, I'm moving. I'm gonna. So I can move faster. I'm gonna try and outflank him a bit. Okay, so you go racing to the side. Valgard. I'm gonna move. I'm not really happy about it. <laughs> Still don't see any treasure. Okay. <laughs> Ozer. Ozer will start chanting in his wolf mask, and power will start flowing through him. I'll take another second to finalize the. the I'll be right there. Hold on. <laughs> He's trying to get the jar open off of yeah. magic. One second. One second. Is, is, okay. Just... Are there rules for ranges of spells? Yes. And, and um, it, it, it dict is depending on the type of spell it is. So if it is a basic spell, then it uses the regular range increments. No. Oh no no no. If it's a basic spell, it uses uh, the number of uh, yards away as a penalty. Okay. Yeah. This is a regular spell. Yep, Cap. So then it'll be, depending on who you're trying to target, uh, it will be however many um, however many yards away your, your target of your spell is. And when you're ready, you can still step as well. So you get to make a one yard step if you like. Okay, like I said, I'll step towards Gearman, who will be the target of my spell. And then they'll okay. All right, Scapti. I'm going to give him a name on the token just so we've got it in chat. Or not chat, in the initiative order. All right. Scapti. I think he's intent on making Gearman pay. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven. He is racing towards you, stalking. Sigrid. I'm going to... Um, there we go. I will move and defend. So you're going to move, yeah, and then if you, if you take the move maneuver, then you're able to defend normally. 
Okay. If you're engaging with Skepti. Oh, moving in the way of your cousin. Look at that. Gearmund, what are you doing? Um, well, I think Kin needs to stick together. So can I, can I move to there? Yep. Am I able to attack? Uh, if, depends on what you did. If your move and attack is your maneuver, you can yeah. attack, but it'll take uh, minus four or a nine, whichever one's lower to your attack. Uh, or you can spend a fatigue point and heroic charge. I'll heroic charge. Go right ahead. Spend that point. Yep, let me see here. Uh, okay. And I will make that attack. Okay, uh, and I'll make defense. Okay, so you swing in. I rolled, holy shit. I got a critical f parry here. Okay. I actually don't know what happens with that. Hold on. Let's see here. <laughs> Anna is saying, pray to your gods. That's not very nice, Anna. Come on. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to... Let's see here. Okay, act defense rolls... I don't know. And I don't need to know right now. Not in the last half hour of the fucking game. So what happens is you swing that sword in and that seething axe of his <laughs> batters it aside, sparks fly out in the dark. And he's not injured. Hack on, what are you doing? Uh, can I combine a heroic charge with rapid strike? Yes. Yep, okay, so I'm gonna charge him behind and then I'm going to try and hit him twice. Go right ahead. So is it minus two with my sort of benefits and stuff? It is uh, minus three, right? Because it's minus normally three. minus six with rapid strike. So it's half the yeah. penalty. Okay, minus three. Let's see if you hit with the first one. That's a really solid hit. Now, he is going to give ground to get a plus three to his dodge. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. He's hit in spite of it. Wait, plus three, dodge 12. One second. He actually might not be. 13, 14, 15. I rolled a 15. He actually just barely managed to skate away. You can still move again because you still have movement. You can move between attacks. Oh, okay. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I've got reach anyway, so I can still... Yeah. I can still put them there, don't I? Um, and then the sword doesn't need to be re, uh, have a ready to reposition between... Is there a flanking maneuver or flanking? No, it just play, plays in with the fact that you're chewing through the defenses. Uh -huh. So, minus three on the second attack. Yeah. <sighs> Gonna lock that. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Let's blow it early. Hey. I'll roll that. Dodge. I do not dodge, so all you need to do is hit. That is a hit! Go ahead and roll damage. Nice. Yeah, that was a normal hit. Okay. And that's damage. Ah! Holy smokes, look at this. So cutting into his flesh, you can tell he is no mortal any longer. Cutting into it is like fro cutting into a frozen cadaver. That is a huge hit. Ah! But it should have done much more devastating damage on him. Thalgard. Well, I can't quite get there. I'm gonna one, two, oh, wait, one, two, three, four. Actually, I can get there. Okay. I'll block him in on this side. Ozer. I will step towards Girmund and finish the uh, Hunting and Gearman, you are hasted if this works. So minus four, so we'll see. Come on. No. 
Ooh, I was so will close. My, I will use my luck on that. Love it. Come on. Okay, come yeah. on. Next one. Green, 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 green. Um, there yes! you go! Nice! <laughs> yeah, so for the next minute, you have plus two to move and dodge. Right. Wow. So your move next is a minute. six now. Right. That's 60 combat rounds. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, then it is Scapti's turn. Scapti Oosh, uh, is going to try and hit. <laughs> he's going to try and take down Valgar because <laughs> nice. he's probably the easiest target. Uh, he's going to take a minus four, so you're going to take minus two to your defense, Valgar. Um, I hit, not a crit, so you get to dodge. You can choose to parry, uh, or you can choose to dodge. And you could do the same thing he did, move back one yard and get plus three to your dodge. Um, yeah, an... I'll do that. Okay, so I'll be dodging so how many retreat. Do I move back? Okay. Two or one? Just one. Okay, yeah. And then uh, you're gonna take a minus two to your penalty to the defense. Okay. So if you click on the dodge and retreat option and just take minus two, it should all roll properly. Oh. Do you have Me your luck my left? Luck. Yep. Okay. Yes. There you go. But I oh, I guess it doesn't matter if I get a critical. So. No. No. Oh yeah, it may. We I don't know yet. So. Yeah, it's okay. Just because it would be worth doing the math for yourself, this is what you would have taken in cutting damage on a hit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I only have 10 hit points, so. Yeah. Uh, you don't die necessarily when you're at zero, but like that would have been enough to sever an arm or a leg or something else. You can remember spend one fatigue point to a lethal strike or something that would like dismember you. You can automatically convert the defense into a success. So swings this, and then he, yeah, he'll yeah, step this way. He doesn't like you, sorcerer. Sigrun, what are you doing? Uh, he, I'm going to do all out attack. Two attacks. Mm. He's dancing around me and looks like, well, he's ignoring me. I'm just going to hit him. <laughs> Go right ahead. That is a hit. Let's make his parry. Uh, that's a success. Batters your broadsword aside. Go for your second attack. Uh, and his, oh, his second parry, I think, is minus four. Or is it minus two? Oh, you know what? I think I put that in here, didn't I? Minus four in second period. Okay, so that's also a hit. Uh, ooh. I think he's going to try and parry. That's minus four to his parry for the second parry. Um, yeah. This is not a great chance. Minus that is good four. enough. A nine will do it. Sparks fly. You swing again. Sparks fly. You should have stayed with your Frankish king. German. I can. I was going to say I was going to. I I can't move an attack. I can s step. Uh, a heroic um, charge. Heroic charge allows you to I, move an attack without penalty, but it costs you one fatigue. I'll do it. Okay. Head, head round. Spend that fatigue. And attack. Okay. And it will be a sword blow. We go now. Do you wish to uh, make a deceptive attack? Take a penalty to yours to impose 
something on his defenses. Uh, I could do that. Is yeah, to, is it minus, is it minus two to me, him? minus one to him or something? Yes, is there yeah. Is that what damage carry? Sorry? Is that what you're doing? Is, is that to, to reduce his parry or? Uh, well, he's already parried twice. If he parries a third time, uh, it oh, is, he's twice. it'll be tough. He can dodge though, and he hasn't retreated yet. Okay. But and when you retreat, it's plus three to a dodge. Okay. I th think I'll just go for a, sw a swing. Go ahead. That is a hit. Okay, and then he is... Man, third parry is... Minus eight, or is it minus... Yep, yeah, minus eight on his third parry. That's a big minus. See, the thing is, he doesn't want to get hit by fucking Hakon. <laughs> that great no. sword's a lot scarier. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I think he's just going to try and parry. So it's minus eight. I do not have a very good chance of this. Hold, I, sh I, I failed, but I didn't fail by much. I failed only by two. So he uh, tries to bring this axe in the way you slip under his defenses. Seven points of damage. Look at that. And again, you it's just as Hakon noted. This guy, it's, it's hitting a frozen corpse. You've tried to cut into frozen beef in the darkest parts of the Scandinavian winter. That's what it's like hacking into this guy. We need this burning, burning creature. I'll finish him off. Okay. Then it is Hacken's turn. What are you doing, Hacken? Um, I should once again charge in and wrap it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you get any positional stuff in GURPS? Like, uh, Rear facing? No, it's it's more a matter of that you're chewing through their defenses with the extra numbers. Right. Okay. Uh, so minus three. Oh. Why has that gone down? So... Oh, and but what it does do? Um, th there is one thing. It, facing does matter. So if he had a shield, shield only applies to in front of you or on the on the arm side. So like, if this thing did yeah. have a shield, coming up from behind would be helpful. Yeah. Oh, rolled uh, the wrong Hacken, thing. Where are you? Did you? Oh, you blew your luck last time. No, I, ro I rolled the wrong thing. I rolled on the defense one. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why it's lower. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is actually a hit. Go but, ahead. Uh, and roll. No, roll your attack again. Oh, okay, I'll just do it again. Oh, it's minus. It's two less. Ooh. That is a hit. He is going to try face. and step. Look at that. How close he is to Ozer. <laughs> Steps back, so I got plus three. I got a really good dodge chance. There we go. He sees you coming in and ducks to the side. Your okay, sword I'll... splinters the stone underneath. I shall swing at him on the return. Yep. Uh, second time. That is a hit. He can dodge again. You can dodge as many times as you like. You just can't get the same bonus from retreating. Oh. Uh... That is just barely enough. He deeks to the side and manages to keep out of your way. So you can dodge multiply without any penalties. Yeah. Yeah, you can dodge right. as many times as you want. It's just that often, especially if you wear armor, um, every your encumbrance, the more encumbrance you get, the it uh, forces down your move, and it's your move is what dictates your dodge. Uh, okay. So heavy armored knights have a harder time doing the rapier kind of, you know, dancing on one foot and keeping it out yeah. of the way. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Valgard, what are you doing? Uh, step and attack. Go ahead. Yet. Rain of blows. I'm going to swing my broadsword. Okay. No! Oh, critical miss! Do you have, uh, luck? No. Oh! <laughs> okay, give us a uh, 3d6 roll, please. Uh oh. Thanks, roll 20. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, okay, so... That can't be good. No, that can't be good. Critical miss. 13. Uh, you lose your balance. You can do nothing else until your next turn, and until... Oh, fuck. And all of your active defenses are at minus two until then. Ooh. So you go in to stab him, and I think what happens is he just sort of, like, grabs your spear, yanks forward a little bit, so you're off balance. 
He did try to hack you in half last time, Valgard. Yeah. Oh, sir, what are you doing? We're going to do a determined all-out attack on Scapti. Oh, nice! While, while shouting, the power is for me, not for you. <laughs> nice! <laughs> Gearman's like, yeah, get wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a hit. Let's see if he can dodge. Done. Done. Narrowly missed it! He's got a really good defense, which is... In future, perhaps the deceptive attacks may be in order here, guys, to try and push those chances down. Right. Scapti, Valgard. Minus two to your defenses right now. He brings that axe up and down. It's not a critical hit, but it is a hit. Do you want to dodge? You can't retreat, unfortunately, because you can't do anything else, but you could dodge or parry, whichever one you think is better. Um, you roll your damage, shows it. Oh, I don't have. I don't have a parry. Do you not have parry? No. You should with your spear. Oh, I have a sword. Oh, you should with your sword. Oh, is it on the under defenses? Page? Yeah. No. Oh, so you need to roll your damage, don't you? Or did no? He, he dodged. He dodged. He dodged. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Here, there. Yeah. Okay. You got um, it. Yeah, I guess it's. Oh, he missed the dodge. Better. This guy also has, just to give context for, for Prip who haven't played GURPS either before or in a while, he has a huge dodge. So, okay. Um, and it'll be minus yeah, two to whatever defense you're using. Okay. Make your call, make your roll, let's see how it goes. Success! Wait, but you didn't no, put the no. minus two. Yeah, I didn't put minus two. Oh, you have no luck, right? No. Okay, would you oh, give no. us a 3d6 roll, please? Um, Let's see, what hit location? Your right arm. My ale arm! Your right arm <laughs> is gone. You take 18 oh. points of damage as it is fully severed blood Jeez. spraying out from it. Now, you could spend one point of fatigue and do that desperate defense. Oh. Because that's going to yeah. fucking kill you, probably. Oh, yeah. oh, that kills me? You'd have to make a health check, but there's a real good chance 18 points of damage will fucking kill you. We'll, oh, we'll I see. Yeah. Spend one fatigue point and lose next turn to convert a failed defense to a success when an attack would be lethal. You, you succeed I'd on do your that. Dog. You want to do that, Valgard? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so sense. you spend... Ah! <laughs> your sword gets up. <laughs> it batters you back, and, like, your arms are completely numb from this. You're going to have to uh, spend next turn just recovering from that defense. Right, just trying to recover. Sigurd, yeah, so no action. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said the disguise, or... No. Deceptive attack. Deceptive attack. So how does that work? I take a you minus. Take two every minus two you take to your one. attack imposes minus one on their defenses. Okay, um, but I have to move, so I take a. No, you you can step. Remember, every with as long as you're not doing. Um, I think every like even attack all out attack they all allow a step. So that's one step. Yep. And then I will swing. Okay. And I'll take. I think I'm minus four. Minus four, okay, so I got minus two to the defense. Come on, Sigrun. Big hit, big hit, big hit, big hit, big hit. Oh! Do you have your luck? But I have my luck. Okay, roll twice more. Not to incentivize, but I rolled a 15 for my defense, so I failed. Okay. So you just need to get a hit out of this. <laughs> da -da -da. Da -da -da. 
It's actually not the internet. It's a series of squirrels that pass a note back and forth between one another <laughs> before they plug things in. Now, they're very well-trained squirrels, but the speed yes. is not... Uh... That is a hit. There you go. Go ahead and roll damage. I rolled it twice just in case. In case, you know, they're critters. <laughs> yeah, you can know a crit would be good. So uh -huh. go ahead and roll damage. Come on, sick run. Oh, bit of a rabbit punch. Now, remember, you can also spend fatigue to make it a mighty blow. Oh, yeah. Uh, the extra effort. Mighty blow, yep. one fatigue point for plus two damage. For plus two damage or plus one damage per dice. I can't remember how many dice you're rolling for your swing. I'm just rolling one. Only dice one. Okay. Do you want okay, to add the plus two? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so that is eight. All right. Yeah! Scapti is hit again. Gearmond. Uh stammer ground and um attack. Regular attack, so you've got a defense. Yeah. Disruptive to take down his defense. Okay. Yeah, I've seen I've I've seen what he can do now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep some sort of defense going here, but I'll I'll start with an attack. That's a hit. Okay. It is defense. Let's see. <laughs> oh, might be. Uh, that is the second fucking parry, so it unfortunately is a mess, because I rolled a I rolled a 14. I'm like, well, that's good enough for his defense, but then I'm like, no, but minus four. So he gets his thing up, and you manage to hack through. Do you want to spend Eight. a fatigue point at plus two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that is 10. You hit him as well. Hacken. Um, yeah, I'm going to charge around the back. Okay, so again, uh, another fatigue point, point for that. Yep. Oh, you're hemming him in. I'm trying to stop him getting away. Uh, and I'll do my usual rapid strike. Okay. Uh. So first... Oh, God, he can't give ground. He can't give ground, guys! <laughs> give no ground. <laughs> Good, that's a hit. He does dodge that one. Okay. Second one. Try, try again. Bad to make this one count. That's yes. a hit, and he doesn't dodge. Go ahead, Come a little on, damage. Mark. Come on, big numbers. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> what does it look like as hack on... The wild brings down Scapty Greycloak. Um, I think it's just um, all of the other weapons on his back, and he's trying to back up, and he's looking round, and he's trying to pull his usual manoeuvres to get away, and he takes his eye off, off the sword, and it just comes hacking into the side of his neck. And almost as soon as it cuts into him, what hits the ground? An ice-cold axe and a water-soaked body of Scapty Grey Cloak, looking like the old man that you have faced before. In the closing minutes of our session, the tower awaits. What do you guys do? I think almost as soon as Scapti hits the floor, Ozer will stare up at the flame and then make for, like, most like a man possessed, make, make, make for the top of the tower. So Ozer, seeming to know his way through this place he has never gone, has is moving at a sprint. What is everyone else doing? Jason. Sigrun's like, no! Goes racing after him. What about Gearman, Hakon, and Valgard? Yeah, I'm following. I uh, have to warily follow. I mean, I'm, I'm slower, but I'll warily follow. Shield raised high. You're actually quite quick because of Ozer's spell for the next minute. Oh, sorry, I am, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm right up there then. You and Hakon, you're actually faster than Ozer, I think. Yeah. I'll keep Did up. you want to stop him, or are you just going to follow and see where he goes? No, no. I think I think he needs to do his talky talk with the fire thing. So our whatever scene it is, he's going to do ends. You guys race through this completely blackened um, 
Uh, and, and if Darkens, he betrays us, I will cut him down. Uh, monastery. Uh, as you're going along, Hacken, would you give us a greed check? <laughs> you should be able to roll. <laughs> Self-control on your greed. <laughs> So you pass a lot of riches. There's a lot of fucking gold in here. It's all noted where it is. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be back. <laughs> and what our scene will end with is in a narrow winding staircase near the top, there is a single iron shod door. That seems from how far you run up here, you're only gonna be able to fit one at a time. And those of you with the heavy weapons, there's no way you could make use of them in here. Or right. the, the two-handed weapons, at least. Or the mm. reach two weapons. But where Ozer is standing, that iron door is, like, just red hot, as if sitting in a blacksmith's forge. The heat you're getting in here is almost making you perspire. And you can see, when Ozer turns to talk to you guys, there is light coming from inside his helm because those runes that he has carved in there are blazing with power. Ozer, I'll leave it to you to tell us how this ends. I think uh, possibly in the last moments where he's still human or entirely human, uh, he will turn to his companions and sort of nod and say, as promised, there are riches for you. And as fated, there is a revelation for me. And then he'll turn back to the door and, and stride towards it. As he strides towards the door, you guys can see as soon as he touches it, he is consumed in fire. Yep, that's his door. Well, well, and we've come a long way. There we are. <laughs> oh, I can't find the stupid thing now. No. Give me one moment, I know where this will be. It turns out I've loaded a lot of frickin' images in the last <laughs> little while. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah, you know, bunch of Soviet troops. We're getting close. Gliding monkey demons, getting closer. <laughs> Down here. Oh, someone trying to rob a traveler. Even closer. And. There we are. Yes. I'm a, I'm a complete fucking idiot for naming these stupid... Naming handouts a stupid name is one thing. Naming images that I need to reference at another point. Less smart. Ozer turns and spares one look back at you. As the seething door opens and there is a raging inferno as if the the doors to Muspelheim were cast open. And then, once he passes through, the door shuts and you are in darkness. What's the last thing we see, guys, as we bring our Part five, I guess, of our Year of Ill Omens campaign to a close. Loot the temple. The ship most certainly could be full of treasures. 
Well, let me ask you this, actually. Here's a more interesting question. I'm assuming you guys are all sailing away. What are each of your characters thinking as they are sailing away from this cursed monastery? And Gearman, since you are the captain, we will go last with you. Sigrun. I think she's overly curious as to what happened and if we'll see Ozer again. Did she secret any form. kind of books or whatnot that the others would have overlooked? But she only has that book that uh, uh, that she had taken from the monastery. Oh, but there are ever so many more secret books here. Oh, here in the <laughs> temple. You see, oh, the, she this, might grab it wow. this secret monastery, for your edification, is what served the church before they gained the key that, uh, I can't remember what his name is, uh, that Darren's character from the first session had. Uh -huh. So there's as much forbidden lore as she could want here. Uh, oh, in that case. I think that'll be part of her spoil. She'll be like, oh, just a book. So. Okay. <laughs> Valgard? Um, I think he's probably thinking that this will make both a grand epic, you know, tale and poem, but also that no one will believe him that it is true. Oh, sir, is there anything that you left behind for your companions knowing what your fate would be? Probably once he steps through the door and the glow sort of fades, they will know that the mask is, is still there, the, the wolf mask with the runes, no. the aren't <laughs> like any other runes, they're sort of still just resting there. Yeah, yeah. Hakan? Um, yeah, he's hoping that Viking days will get back to the old, just rape and pillage and, you know, just killing people, collecting their stuff. All this weird magic and mystery done with, and he's just glad to have finally got the treasure and go home triumphant. And Giermund. Too high, too high a price paid for uh, what we have supposedly discovered. Um, the the spirits were not with us. Uh, and Ozza uh, led us astray. Um, but there is land here. So I'm going to go back mm. with more and explore the land because that could be the greatest treasure of all. Mm. Did Giermund take Ozer's helm? I, I don't know. I don't know if I had the opportunity to. If I did, I may I may well have done. From what Ozer said, it was the only thing left behind. In which case, yes. Okay. And guys, that brings us to the end of part five. Uh, fear not death, your doom is set. So then... That brings us to the end of part five. We have but one part to go. So for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for this part five of our year-long Year of Ill Omens charity campaign. As is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below. I will tell you that I was fairly fast and loose with some of the skill rules in this, so if anyone's going to try and correct uh, any uh, use of the GURPS rules, I, we don't care. Not a little. <laughs> so don't don't work, save your breath. Um, but uh, a, a huge thank you to the generous donors who made today's uh, session possible. This was, um, uh, I mean, I'll, we'll talk offline because we don't need to clog up the time here uh, to see what you guys thought of, uh, of your first time with GURPS. I had so much fucking fun running this. I, I absolutely love running GURPS. It's... Uh, I remember, I'm remembering more and more why I enjoyed this system so much uh, before. 
Um, there is also uh, a link down below to the Ch Heroes Save Villages campaign. That is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel that made this session possible. There is still one more part that the generous donors need to vote on. And that will uh, be if you follow the link and you donate $10 or more and or have since June 1st, 2023, head on over to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, which is linked in the description below, to the Charity Initiatives channel, and find the options for voting for our final session for this. So, last thing I will say, we're already over time here, is a huge thank you to our very generous don uh, donors and a huge thank you to our generous players for taking the time to jump in and go a Viking with us on this Saturday evening or afternoon, depending on your place in the world. So, Graham, Darren, David, Jeffrey, and Dave, thank you so much for playing today, guys. I had so much fun writing and running this for you. So, it was a blast. We yeah. will be back in two months' time to wrap up this year long campaign. And what we'll be playing, what heroes will be seeing, we'll have to see from the donors. But until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our Viking heroes have been uncovering when they were just trying to steal from a bunch of innocent people. <laughs> and until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. <laughs>